What is up everyone and welcome to The WAN Show! We've got a bunch of great topics for you guys today, including a special guest! That's right, we've got- oh, there he is. He's kind of he's kind of in the middle of the frame now. Oh, he's gonna he's leaning. He's le oh he's leaning out of the frame now. It's got to, hey, there you there go. We go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got David on the show to talk about the incredible amount of effort that went into this year's April Fool's prank. I'm really not quite sure how he pulled it off, but you guys might not realize this if you're not subscribed to Floatplane. We actually had a lot of those people working out of the house, so it was the joke was that it wasn't really a joke. So we're going to talk about everything that was involved in getting entire departments of the company moved into that residential house for almost a week for some of them. Yeah. It <laughs> seemed pretty inconvenient. Uh, we're also going to be talking about how AI, it turns out, is just underpaid foreigners. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like that always has been meme. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What else we got today? Uh, 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 Discord wants you to monetize your friends. Uh, that's I don't know about you guys, but my friends are worthless. So uh, good luck with that Discord. <laughs> I don't. Is it like a, a zero times zero situation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't even have another one. I was just so focused on that. Intel Megafab, uh, possibly haunted. Yeah, yeah, that's like, the whole thing. Actually, I guess. Hmm. See Sonic square bits square paste <laughs> square pit. What would a square paste square be? Spaced? Yeah, it's our square paste. Yeah, you walk like, but you can only move in squares. It's I'd like artisanal uh, toothpaste. Anyway, Squarespace and MSI are the sponsors for the show today. So I think we might as well jump right into what exactly went on over on Flow uh, over on Flow Plane. <laughs> It's been an extremely long, actually, couple weeks. So the first thing that happened in order to make this April Fool's shoot work was uh, because we accidentally double booked it with my vacation, I actually had to fly home from Japan. Do you know this? I didn't know that was why. I had to come back a week early because we accidentally <laughs> scheduled our vacation during the April Fool's shoot, which couldn't be moved because you would think, oh, well, surely we could have just gotten ready and done the shoot a little bit earlier. But um, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll have David kind of talk about why that might not have been feasible. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people were speculating online that the house was, you know, in between tenants, but no, there's people living there currently. And so we had to send them on vacation for two weeks so that we could have ac access to the house for two weeks. And move all their stuff out. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard that, I... It took me a second to, like, properly process what that meant. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, <laughs> where okay. Did you, hold on, sorry, where did you even put it? Where did uh, We paid go? for storage. Okay. Yeah, so the idea was, all right, we're going to move into the office, but yeah. the tenants there are very much in the middle of their lease. <laughs> like, this, is, this isn't like, a, yeah, we can get easy access to it. Some, it's full of their stuff. <laughs> so I got to say, if I was them and... My landlord called me up and was like, hey, so here's the deal. I want to move all your stuff out of your house for two weeks. I'm going to send you somewhere. And then when you come back, it's all going to be moved back in probably in the same. Would you do it? I think I think so. Would you would you take the deal? Free vacation. Let's say, uh, le yeah, let's say it was... Uh, if there's some amount of assurance for like, hey, if we like break this thing, we'll replace it. I mean, I can tell you they have nothing in writing. <laughs> I think it would really depend on the landlord, but, but maybe, yeah. David, would you do it? Oh, okay, your landlord a, right now, would you do it? A hundred percent. Yeah, I would take a free vacation. It. Like you it's could, you could go vacation. today, today. Yeah. Okay, what about you, Dan? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really? Okay. We're all doing it. So apparently, this is just a, a completely normal thing. I, it's I would, definitely not normal. <laughs> yeah. I, I would definitely be hesitant. Any of us are normal. Yeah, no, not normal. <laughs> I can think of a lot of people that would never do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. But I'm just thinking, like, okay, if I like take a couple small valuables and like store them at my, my, at my parents' place, which I could do in like half an hour, 
then yeah, whatever, just send it. So I think one also, of the, see ya. I think one of the biggest challenges with this though was that David and I approached it with very different creative visions from the start. So David, oh. why don't you talk them through what could have been and we'll let the audience kind of ruminate on it themselves. Cause honestly, the issue was not that his idea was bad, in my opinion. I think it was great. It just wasn't what I had had in the back of my mind for the last two or three years or whenever I originally came up with this idea. And I was like, can we, can we change this? To anyway, so David, do you want to talk them through what you, what you had thought of? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that first meeting we had was pretty contentious. It got pretty <laughs> heated. Um, my idea was more mockumentary style. So we're kind of doing it more skits, uh, room by room, department by department, and separating it more so that I could move people in and out of the house a little easier. And we could, you know, have something set up for them, but it doesn't have to actually uh, be super real. Mr. Consider it over here. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, let's just move the company in. <laughs> yeah, and it was going to be definitely more absurd. Like one of the first jokes that I wrote, and I think it was the, the point at which we were diverting uh, was like, oh yeah, we don't have enough power, so we handed out typewriters for people to work on. Uh, and it was going to be kind of more silly and, and absurd in that direction, but Linus uh, convinced me. Uh, uh, he, he, we, we, we argued, and then after a weekend of me cooling down, <laughs> I was convinced uh, that, that he was right, and that having it be a real thing is something that you can't fake. Uh, and so we decided that we were going to really move people and set them up in this house and set up this real network infrastructure uh, and bring real computers, real monitors and have it that every single person at that house could do real work. And I'm pretty sure that every single person that was in that video, other than labs, labs is probably the one. Yeah. Um, they were really doing their job in that house. Yeah. yeah. So that was what that was what um, David told everybody was in order to make it feel lived in, bring other like logistics will will bring in the monitors, which were graciously provided by ViewSonic and Landfest. Um, and Landfest. Yeah. Um, so the monitors were brought in from a third party, but everyone was told, OK, other than the basic, like we'll have buckets for you to sit on, gather up kind of everything you can carry such that you could do a day's worth of work. Yeah. And I so that's why it really felt lived in and worked in because the editors were actually editing real videos. Yeah. If you look, if you watch the video, because the turnaround for the April Fool's video was really fast. If you screen peek, you will see videos that are not out yet being worked <laughs> on by the people sitting in the house. One of, one, of, one of the more insane meetings I've probably ever had was talking to David because uh, I, I got this like a message or something. I don't remember what it was saying basically like, yeah, we need some like servers and cables and i was like oh okay we're just gonna like take some dead servers off the shelf we'll just lay them there and we'll just like toss some cables around so it looks like there's table cables in the thing and he's like yes yeah, so we need like a working nas so the editors can like be productive while we're there and i'm just like what is happening <laughs> what like what? how is this necessary for anyway so the part that david left out of the story from the pitch beating <laughs> was that we reached a point where I felt like we were at a bit of an impasse. <laughs> and one of my favorite conflict resolution strategies oh, is boy. to bring in a third party, to get okay. a third opinion. Um, in this case, it was less of a third opinion, and it was more of, I feel like David was being so sensible <laughs> and practical about everything. He was trying to make so sure brought that... brought in, like, the most... Because when he does this, it's it's great. He'll always bring in a loaded person who mm. he knows is going to agree with his side. <laughs> oh, so, I sorry. didn't. So who did you pick? No, I didn't. I totally. didn't yeah, even. No I didn't. Oh, fine, Dave. Uh, not, not David. Fine, <laughs> Luke. Who do you think I brought in, then? I don't know. Um, well, make a guess, because you're not going to get it. Elijah. No. <laughs> come on come at me I, bro. I don't know i don't know come don't at know. me yvonne no where where was this meeting uh it, no no it took was place it in, in the my office building? it was in my office in the okay yeah he's not gonna get it. he has no chance okay, there was, then, then you might not was... remember but there's actually two people brought into this meeting oh 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 i forgot A about one of them fourth party okay okay oh 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 you're right oh okay so first Okay, fine. Go ahead. You get one more guess. You haven't gotten either of them yet. James. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, James was the first one. The second you said two people, oh, I was like, whoa. Okay, I forget what he said, though. David, what did James say? He was on your side almost right away, and that's when I knew. I was like, okay, 
Maybe my brilliance is not true. Okay. <laughs> I forgot about that, but it wasn't... It, I mean, realistically, I don't feel like you were digging in that much based on the difference in creative opinion. Mm -hmm. It felt like a lot of it was just like, everyone's going to hate me <laughs> for, <laughs> for doing this. And so... That's a, fair, that's a fair thing to be concerned about. So the party I called in and where I think I actually got David to come around to it was I called Taryn. Okay. Yeah, so I, I called him and I basically went, okay, here's the pitch. I actually think I would have eventually got that. But. As, long as, we, as long as we make it clear to everyone that we understand that their deadlines are going to be pushed. Yeah. And that their productivity is going... As long as it's going, not going to stress people out. And as long as I had Taryn's buy-in on the opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. Because, like, dude, David, I don't even know what the bill was for this. I don't know exactly either. Does <laughs> anybody think... know? We should find we should find out. I'm sure one of the I'm sure one of the accountants do. I don't know if you want to find out. Yeah. yeah. There's like no way it was worth it. But the yeah, so I don't even know if you're what listening the, on a podcast format I did air quotes. What the actual production bill was for this, but it was probably, if not certainly, the highest cost production we have ever done. And that even ignores the opportunity cost. Oh yeah. Because it's one thing to hire a bunch of talent to come in and produce a thing it's a whole other thing to shut down the i i would say david how many people ultimately volunteered like what percentage of the company did we actually have in there i think total it was probably around 55 ish people okay so that's over half that's yeah. like because because out of the locals that's almost 70 percent of the actual local staff then like six, 60 something percent that is absolutely wild so we, was anyone voluntold or was it all? It was all voluntel. It was all voluntel. Because I first would meet, oh. I first met with the managers, and I was like, "Hey, uh, you know, can you pick people?" And I mean, I don't know department by department how it went, um, but I basically was like, "Hey, just pick your people, and then uh, we'll we'll go from there." <laughs> Everyone I've talked to about it was stoked on it. So like, oh, well, you haven't talked to all the same people as me. <laughs> oh. Fun. <laughs> no, everyone was such a good sport about it. And like, I think there was such a great energy being at the house. Um, everyone was having a good time. And it's rare that we get to do stuff like that all together. And yeah. it, it's even rare that we get to do that stuff with that many people for production. And so I think it was kind of a real treat and everyone sort of cherished uh, the days we were there. I think for the people who weren't <laughs> part of that, um, they the vibe for me was a lot like like old channel super fun mm -hmm. when we would just like grab people out of their desks and be like okay we need to shoot a channel super fun guess what you're getting you know shot with nerf darts uh, it's going to be a battle uh, your team basement we're team attic let's go like yeah, like yeah, it yeah. really had that sort of chaotic vibe but I've got to give credit to David to the logistics team mm -hmm. I've got to give credit to our partners. It was shockingly organized. We booked two days for the shoot, and I don't think we went over one and a half. Oh, not even. We were like uh, maybe nine hours of shooting. Absolutely yeah. wild. Actually super good. Yeah. Very difficult to do with any form of production. Yeah, and the, the number of moving parts there were in that mess. The, and it was this was David. This was David being an absolute fucking mad lad. Um... <laughs> I didn't intend, well, I thought of it as we got to the point in the script, but David had, was already way ahead of me. The idea of actually shooting tech linked there oh, yeah. <laughs> on the Dude. janky green screen, that's not, that's not me. The thing, the thing I was going to say before we started, and you stopped me because you're like, say it for the show, was that the, the interwoven storylines was crazy and like easily my favorite part. You've got Wan Show seeding interest you've got the the tech linked seeding interest uh you've got the, the 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 prank at the end everyone's like what is yeah. this that's and then, a float plane exclusive and then that by the way a float plane exclusive like this one video it's just like morphed into so many different there's there's pieces. so there's so, so much sick. like ah there's so many there's layers a short to circuit, it. Too. Yeah, there's a short circuit. There's that was shot circuit. in the hot tub. Yeah, by the two jigs. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that, but totally. Yeah, yeah, I knew about that. That's, yeah, it's so many different things. Oh, I freaking love it. Uh, Porto asks, this is in the float plane chat, did you guys had, a, had to talk with the neighbors? So I did see one of our old neighbors. You remember our neighbor on the one side who uh -huh. we, we had, I, I felt like, a pretty cordial relationship with until, I think she's a bit of a, like, vegetation enthusiast. 
Um, oh. And we had an arrangement, <laughs> me and Luke, where uh, his rent was significantly subsidized uh, by his upkeep of the property. Yeah, totally. Upkeep of the property that he just <laughs> didn't do. Um, they kept the internet going. Yeah. The state of our lawn, the state of our lawn was the straw, and that's what it looked like, it looked like straw, was yeah. the straw that broke the camel's back and was what made the neighbors ultimately come and complain to the city and get us see, kicked out. See, I just, I don't believe in short lawns because it's not good for the environment, it's not good for the insects, which are good for the, the whole, like, ecological system. How do you explain the parts of it that were so short they were dirt? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, you want to make space for uh, new plants to grow. So I saw that all just I grass. saw that neighbor over the fence, and uh, I was in the middle of a take or something. But she just like I don't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah, you. yeah. She didn't say hi or anything. So I'm like, all right, yeah. I guess you didn't miss us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's okay. I mean, we were realistically, we were only in there for probably about eighty hours. Like a little over three days. Did, did mm -hmm. you ever tell her that I was supposed to upkeep the property? I don't think so. Interesting. Because she was really good friends with me the yeah. whole time. <laughs> all right. I like helped her with something in her house one time. I helped her move things in and out all the time. Like we, we were actually, we were good. She, I thought we were good too until it was actually her daughter that like came to the door and gave me a hard time about it. Interesting. So I'm not a hundred percent convinced actually that she ever had a problem. Because she might have just like not recognized you to be honest. Yeah, that's possible. It's been a long time, and if she had no primer that you were supposed to be there, why would she think it was actually... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. The thing I was most worried about with the neighbors was there was six or seven days where we had moving trucks, and it's a it's a compact street, uh, and <laughs> yeah. there's no parking spot, so we would just double park this moving truck from different companies because there was different people that were involved, uh, and people would... People were really nice, which I was grateful for, but I could tell by like the sixth or seventh day of a moving truck, neighbors were starting to get curious about what was going on. Yeah. Nothing. They'll go and they'll check and there'll be nothing. Everything's gone. Everything's clean. The perfect crime. Man, and some of the stuff we did was just could have caused an immediate call to the city. Like that shot we have of all the cars in the back alley. I totally forgot about that. How did you do that? We, How was that okay? We lucked out mm -hmm. so hard. David wasn't even coordinating it. He was in one of the cars, and <laughs> I was I wasn't thinking about this at all. I was like, "Hey, um, I, I, it was Andrew shooting at that point, I think, right? Yeah, yeah I was like, "Hey, Andrew, um, you know what?" A, a, and people were kind of like pulling in a, a, from both sides. I was like, "Andrew, maybe get like a pan shot." Uh, I didn't mean immediately. I just meant maybe get like a pan shot of all the cars because we wanted it to feel like the whole alley was packed, and it did, didn't it? Yeah. In the shot, so he just starts doing it immediately, and it just happened that everyone like like stopped kind of like right as he like clicked finished in it. right at the right time. Yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> David. I don't think we need to do another take. Everyone get out of here. This it was so lucky too, because I was really getting frustrated. I was like, I need, I need five people in cars. I need six people in cars. I need cars right now. And no one was moving. And I was like, Oh goodness gracious. And then I eventually we got like four people that were there, but then all the labs people rolled up just as we were doing it. And so all of a sudden we have like eight or nine cars <laughs> yeah. packed in there and it was, it was perfect. Who's, whose car oh, had been keyed shot. recently? Co so we were Colin. Able, Colin. Oh. So we were able to get that key shot. Hey, the amount of convincing that happened for the video too i don't know if we want to even say who it was but a, yeah. a certain news organization reached out asking for comment um okay that's this is why this is really funny that's crazy okay this is funny hold on so i'm gonna i'm not gonna say who it's from but i will say that this is a serious uh, and then if I, if I, while you looked that up, if I remember correctly, there's a whole thread on the forum about how everyone was mind blown that you guys keyed a car for the video. Yep. There, were, there was a few people that were like, oh, you can see if you look frame by frame it that it's get, pretty yeah, keyed. It did get pointed out, but a lot of people were but convinced. An no, Andrew's, Andrew, were, he, man, they, he worked the camera, we worked the angle. <laughs> so good. Okay, so this is, this is the email sent to me and our CEO. Yeah. Um, hey, guys. Sorry to be shooting you a work email on Easter Sunday. Saw this super odd post on threads from your account and wanted to reach out to confirm whether it's real or a joke. I've attached a screenshot. Um, and it's just... And it's that one that's like, guess who's moving? You! Notice of eviction. Dear, uh... 
something of Linus Media Group. We regret to inform you due to your continued failure to make mortgage payments, blah, 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 blah. It was just part of this. It was part of the whole April yeah, Fool's yeah, bit. Yeah. Oh, man. I recognize the, the meme. Yeah, I, I, I love that. Um, you know what? No, I think this might identify the outlet. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Yeah, I think my favorite fake out was there was a brand that reached out and was like, oh, can we get your new address? We need to send some stuff to you. And it was like, no, I <laughs> yeah, didn't hear yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Cool, cool that they still wanted to support. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, even though I, you know, uh, I had we had our accountants looking up how to commit tax uh, tax fraud or whatever, <laughs> and I outright said that you know sponsors weren't going to get stuff back. They're like, yeah. yeah, we've been paid before. Yeah, sure, it should <laughs> fine. be fine. <laughs> He's good for it. They'll I mean, he, figure it out. he couldn't go to the same country as P Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I don't have a private plane. Uh, yeah. Only, yeah. only, yeah. Just a just a vision room. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You like you like raising up into the thing that I broke at that moment. Uh, you know what's really funny is I screwed up the take. I had my eyes closed. I couldn't see. Shit. <laughs> oh my god, that's really funny. I was like, hey, David, I think we gotta redo that take because I, 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 I had my eyes closed. <laughs> it was so good. And then we're like, you know what? No, that's actually kind of funny. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. funnier. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, the, the behind the scenes is over an hour. And even though I was there for almost all of it, I, I, I almost all of the actual shooting of the behind the scenes, I wasn't there for a lot of the setup because I was on vacation. I come in jet lagged as heck, kind of. With a little bit of trepidation, no offense, no, no offense. Understandably. A little bit of trepidation. This is a major, major investment. One that we have absolutely no hope whatsoever of recouping any, any of, of, our, of our costs from straight up tax write-off. I was bad. <laughs> straight up You're tax write-off. me to it. We <laughs> lost so much money on this oh, production. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the money. And so I'm coming into this shoot going, okay. You know, we had a good script review. I think everything's in probably in pretty good shape. I think it's in capable hands, but you never know. Well, it's so, my first big project. Um, and it was enormous. <laughs> yes. Yes. So there's, there's, all, there's so many moving pieces and so much that could go wrong. And I walked in the door and I, I had not intended for it to be in the cut of the YouTube video when I walk in the door and I just lose it. Right. <laughs> because it was the intention was for me to be more like in my just like, you know, whole character. Right. Um, but when I saw the rough cut for review and I saw that they had left it in, I went, you know what? It kind of it kind of works. But that was it. I hadn't seen it yet. That was that was the moment I walked in the door. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, because I saw the editors there. Dude, the the four person desks. With, with the, that's so funny. Like I just I I can't. That's all, David. The bunk desk. That was so funny. I, I did, and like how it's actually efficient, sort of. And like, yeah, you can your, fit a lot of people. Like, hold on a second. This. This kind of works. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Why, why, do I, why is this like, why does this work in my head? This shouldn't work at all. Why, why am I sort of okay with this, but also not? And then watching people like, I think was, you had to like crawl over someone. To get, <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just so good. Yeah. It's so good. I want to clarify that one wasn't my idea. And it's, oh. it's one of those things that it's like, I had so many meetings and like brainstorm sessions yeah. that it's such a mishmash of a million ideas. So I don't want to take credit for too much, but uh, I'll take credit for some of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely a team effort. 100%. Um, was it Justin who put together the like bunk desks and like... So that was... So early on, I recruited logistics in order to make things possible. And I'm someone that Makes doesn't sense. like to ask for help. I'm a, I just want to do it myself. I'll, I'll put in the legwork. This was too much. But it was impossible. Yeah. So this impossible. was a good, it was a great exercise for me because I had to communicate with people and be like, okay, I need help. Um, <laughs> and so they were really good about finding smart solutions. Like I remember going to Justin and being like, okay, I need this bunk desk for socials to sit in. He's like, just use the shelf. And yeah. I was like, I was like, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, oh, smart. That was really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the same with the desks. I had given him a drawing of like, oh, here's kind of like what I had in mind. And he, and then logistics, I think Alex was like, can we just put a desk on top of another desk? I was like, yeah, okay, sure. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the informed retreat asks, the only thing I'm trying to figure out is, does Gary actually like ARC at all? <laughs> Obviously, he's holding Intel stock, but Linus, can you comment? 
don't read too much into a joke. There is knowing Gary. Do you guys have any idea what his background is? The, the guy's the guy's ethical. There's no way he's holding Intel stock and boosting Arc. What Gary is an enthusiast for is exciting, innovative new technology. That's why Which the it, guy it is. buys dumb stuff like Quad FX. That's why he buys into and daily drives stuff like Arc, so that he was there. If it takes off. He was there before it took off. He's an early adopter um, to a fault, right? His personal computer is, like, super sick. Yeah, of course it is. It's not it's necessary. Gary. Yeah, it's Gary. He, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so Fits the bill. He, he, he likes the idea of there being another competitor in the GPU space, and so should you. And to be clear, when I say his personal computer is super sick, I don't mean he just like bought expensive parts and put it in a box. It's like very artfully done and took some craftsmanship. If I remember correctly, it's hardline water cooled. It's very nice. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but it's very nice. Yeah. Ah, uh, man. There's honestly, there's like, there's so much that we could talk about. Um, Oh man, there's a lot of jokes that did not make it into uh, the YouTube video, or because because the script was kind of rough. Like there's scripted parts, but then there's parts of the script that just say crawl around on you know the people in this area and interact with them a little bit, right? And so, man, we had uh, a, a, did the did the line about the the clothes being red because of the blood of the people, the underpaid people who were making them. Did that make it into the cut? The I blood making so. the shirt red did make it in but I, it did okay. yeah. i think it was sarah's blood though oh but no there, that's a separate thing that's sarah's oh, tears okay. Sarah, okay. or sarah's blood is on the was... merch shirt and we're like why is there blood on this shirt oh because i put blood sweat and tears okay got yeah, it got yeah. it got it got it um yeah anyway there's there's some stuff that d definitely didn't make it in uh, the the energy was it was great was incredible yeah uh just you could tell people it's the kind of thing that feels like a chore in the moment or like as you're getting ready for it but then you do it and then it's over and you look back on it and you're like i'm glad so cool. i'm glad i participated in that type two fun i the best kind of fun i couldn't believe the commitment to the bit when I got out to the backyard, found out that the hot tub heater doesn't work, <laughs> and Jake Bellavance... Wait, it actually didn't? <laughs> it works, but it takes like tw oh 24 gosh. hours plus of, of heat heating, and I couldn't leave it overnight because I'm not watching it. And so I, every hour the day before and every hour that morning, I got there like three hours early to put it in to give it a chance, uh, but it made no difference. It was freezing it cold. It was freaking cold. And it was actively raining, wasn't it? And the fact that Jake Bellavance... <laughs> And Jake Tyvee were like, Bell was in there a long time. A long time. Because he was in there from when we shot the LTT, when we shot that portion of it. <laughs> I didn't realize they were separate. That makes sense. Until Jake oh, Tyvee no. arrived and got in with them. <laughs> and then shot that entire short circuit video. Oh, man. I... I, I I, c I couldn't believe it like the and the poor editors like they were there almost all day mm -hmm. on their buckets <laughs> <laughs> oh they weren't sitting on buckets they were sitting on the ground oh right their right. desk was made of buckets their desk was oh. made of buckets <laughs> yeah good. i got it i got a pretty good idea of what the vibe was going to be like when david messaged the general chat and he goes hey does anyone have any camping chairs or five gallon buckets <laughs> <laughs> i need as many as i can get <laughs> It wasn't the whip and pillory that uh, that tipped you off. I didn't see that. <laughs> Fun fact: that riding crop that Dennis is using to hit Gary with during the uh, the torture scene. Yeah, we already had that. Yeah, create a warehouse. That's some upcoming merch. <laughs> Our new lineup. Oh my. <laughs> It was actually an inspiration piece for the ultimate cat teaser. Ah. Uh, yeah, because I had told those guys I wanted the quality to be um, kind of similar to like a, like a leather wrapped riding crop. However, I, uh, that one is clearly for play. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I had meant more like an actual riding crop. You know, you know the like type of people when you you ask for that and they don't go to like stampede they go to a slightly different organization <laughs> to acquire one yeah so it's like hmm <laughs> anywho because we, we have like literally down the road yeah there's a shop you could buy an actual one for horses i know like yeah. i know pretty cool yeah 
Now that it's over, are you ready for the next one? Oh, I thought we weren't doing another one. We're never doing April Fools again. That is true. <laughs> April Fools. <God. laughs> so did did you did you was it worth it? It was definitely worth it, and uh, I had a good time doing it. I was very exhausted. I'm still like kind of recovering, but uh, I go on vacation next week, so nice. It's perfect timing. That's nice. Good timing. Um, but yeah, it was a thrill. Uh, this is kind of the projects, the kind of projects I want to do. So I'm, uh, I was very happy to be doing it. All right, cool. All right, thanks, David. Bye. Appreciate Thank you sticking around with us for uh, for a pretty late day for my oh, chat. Wait, no, sorry, hold on. I can't let you go just yet. Um, Speaking of you being tired. Okay, there's, yeah, there's, um, we have some, mer- I forgot we had some merch oh, messages yes, 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 yes. Um, pertaining to this. Uh, Robert L. asks, uh, this year's April Fool's video was probably top three for me. Uh, how far out do you start planning, writing, and shooting the April Fool's videos? Well, we started next year's. <laughs> so that gives you an indication. Uh, I was brought in to this one a few months ago, uh, and there had already been the idea... Uh, and I was kind of given like, hey, write a script and or come up with ideas and we'll talk to Linus and stuff. So it's been probably t- three ish months that has really been sort of in progress. And then the last three weeks here for me have been 100 percent dedicated to this. Um, maybe like 90 percent have other stuff to do. But um, so it's three months of planning kind of going and then three, four weeks of like full tilt making it happen. I'm trying to see here when we asked the tenants. um if they were chill with it, uh, November twentieth. Wow, was when we was when we pivoted because we had originally planned something else, and we realized that it was not going to be possible to execute in time. I think I was still a shooter at that point. Yeah, so that was that was our initial outreach. Um, oh no, that wasn't even initial outreach. That was like Yvonne connecting everyone to talk about it in more detail. Uh, Wait, what did Ludwig just do? What did Ludwig just do? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> we have a curse. Ludwig video released during WAN show. Whoa, 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 whoa! What is yeah, this? What did uh, he do? What is this about? Is this is this is this something to Ludwig video just dropped? Okay, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is everyone talking about this? I don't oh see no! It. Stop doing this. Emergency stream? Is that it? That's live right now. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, okay. They're confused. Float plane notification. You mean our Ludwig video? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, the Ludwig video is out. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, that's probably bad timing. Uh, anywho, well, let's continue with WAN show. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, floaters are floaters have got a lot of content to watch. Okay, sorry, let me just see if there's a couple of other I love you guys calling them floaters is Aaron asks, the April Fool's joke seemed like a lot of work. What was the most difficult thing, the most difficult stunt to pull off? I think it's the people. I think there's some departments that were like super on board and there's some that I had to make it just so many accommodations for. uh, And I had to make a lot of my work was making sure that they could arrive at the house and start working um, Mm -hmm. because they were more concerned with making sure that they weren't losing productivity. Uh, and so right. cause some deadlines are not even, they're not self-imposed. Yeah. They're not management imposed. They're yeah. like government imposed. So I'm sure accounting had some concerns about like hitting deadlines. Well, they, they weren't too bad. I don't want to name the department. I'm not, oh. I'm, <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair um, enough. But right. I think, no, no, probably. <laughs> um, but I think, it's getting the people there is the hardest part. There's no like single prop that was super hard. Um, It's just like timing the people, having it all work out. And I think like I just, we got so lucky that everything was lining up uh, and there was no huge issues. And it was like spitting rain sometimes, but it didn't rain too much. And the times we really needed to be outside and walking around, it let up and like, oh, there, there was a lot that went right. It kind of reminded me of some of those old uh, like production, ad production shoots way back in the day for like Asus and Funk and stuff like that, where like, oh, yeah, I'm if sure it had started, if the wind had picked up like this 20 <laughs> minutes earlier, we wouldn't have gotten It'd the shoot screwed, done. Yeah, and yeah. If the if the if the water seal had broken on the camera you know, five minutes earlier, we wouldn't have finished getting the shoot and like just. It, it reminded me of the old days in more ways than one. 
Uh, all right, let me see if there's uh, Speaking any other of ones the, here. The old days, as far as I can tell, we have fairly diligently, after the fact, labeled all of the April Fool's video with April Fool's joke at the beginning of the title. So if you want to look up our old videos, it's actually pretty easy to do. I wanted to look at our 2013 one and found that a lot of them are, are labeled. April Fool's 2016, mm -hmm. April Fool's joke. Well, Luke, do you know why? No. Because we had to. Because too many people believed oh. them. <laughs> it was actually causing problems. And before you guys say, hey, um, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, we'll do that right away. Uh, before you guys say, they're, they're probably trolls, Linus, you're falling for the tro you, No, you have no idea. I can tell the difference. After we labeled it April Fool's, this, this should tell you. After we labeled it April Fool's, the problem went away. Yeah. But a significant number of our previous April Fools have needed the label sooner rather than later, or it's been a real problem. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, I I just I don't really know what to, I don't really know what to say other than I think it was it George Carlin who famously said, "Think of an average person. Half, <laughs> yeah. Of, yeah. half of people are dumber than that." <laughs> I I still I still love the Fractal Design R four unboxing April Fools. It's just like. <laughs> I, I adore this type of humor. Was it your idea to just leave it there for 11 minutes? Yeah, because back then... Uh, you here, we'll go to Luke's laptop. Videos, right? uh, no, back, <laughs> back then, that was the typical length of our videos. And uh, there was no preview like that. There was no thumbnail preview. Yeah. Or um, like, uh, like uh, timeline preview, that's the one. So the video was just... Um, yeah, 10 minutes of it just sitting in the yard. So this was, I think, the third time I had unboxed this case. Yeah. The first time I unboxed it again... So the second time I unboxed it was because I forgot. Yes. I legitimately made an entire new <laughs> unboxing about the Define R4, not realizing I had already done it. You know, you've unboxed too many things, Win. Yeah. And then, yeah, you, you drop it. Yeah. I just, I just find this so funny. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. I watched the server room on fire one. That one's not funny. Yeah, I, I, cause my kids asked if we had ever done a prank on our staff for April Fools. And that one, if I recall correctly, you guys didn't know, didn't know, but like figured it out, I guess, uh, pretty quickly. Why well, was the reactions like really bad? Yeah. It's just, it just like, isn't funny. Uh, and yeah. the fire pole one is not very good, but I'd say the rest of them. the fire pole meme lived for far too long. Luke, the fire pole meme is still alive. Still alive. Still alive. David, can you tell us <laughs> when was the last sighting of the fire pole? It's in the April Fool's video. Okay, people kept saying this. I didn't see it. It's I very short. You. I'll way, show you. If you were watching that video, there's a 11 more minutes of nothing other than that case just <laughs> sitting in the grass. It's it's amazing. That's my I, type of April Fool's. Yeah, I, I love that kind of stuff. Um, so, hold on. Got ads. What is this ad? Okay, so here's a here's a video. Oh, look, we've got David just floating here. I love Hello. it. Hello, look at yeah. David. Um, he looks like a suggested video. I get <laughs> I'd, I'd click, click on me, me. click on me, please. I get credit for this one. Go Linus. Uh, but going out my executive exit. Oh wait, no, oh, no, that's no, no. not the one. It's a little bit further. Uh, hold on. Wait, wait for it. Where did I go? Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Going out my executive exit. Okay, this is David. The uh, executive exit just like out the window so I don't have to see everyone. Did I totally rip ripped that. Oh. Did you see it? You see I, it? I, I didn't like put together it was supposed to be the fire pole. I thought it was just like a drain pipe or something. So I go yeah. out and... <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny, actually. Dude, this video is worth watching at minimum five times. I, yeah, I didn't really think about watching it again, but there, I feel like I have to. There now. are, especially for someone who actually worked <laughs> out of this office, <sighs> the, it is so full of inside jokes and references to the old days and random weird little Easter eggs and props. I don't think that if you gave me six <clears throat> months to do it on my own, right? Like this is not something that could have been done 
in one it mind. Means many minds. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have come up with this many references, and I worked there the whole time. Yeah, like I, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. People are like, "Whoa, I missed that." <laughs> Someone said, "Why didn't you watch on a float plane?" Which is a pretty good question. That is a good question. Yeah, the reason is because I didn't have another float plane window. Oh no, I did have another float plane window open. Okay, wow. I usually don't have the second float plane window open, and then I always if screw you redirect up, the live and I go the, somewhere else. It takes away my chat. The chat uh, I, I, there's a solution to that. There's a very easy solution to that. But I just am in the habit of not browsing float plane because i i do this i always do it and then it closes my chat yeah um i just wanted to razz you yeah oh man so yeah float plane if you are not subscribed on float plane now is the time to do it there's a couple of reasons for that one is that pricing is actually going up in a little while i've heard about this um but because of our commitment to uh to 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 honoring our agreements uh, anyone who subscribes at old pricing will be grandfathered in at that pricing. That's cool. Uh, um, and because it, I haven't confirmed we can do that yet. So we'll figure it out. No, they have to be. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it has to be. That it has. To, this is the way. Sick. Uh, yep. Anyway, so thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Minus lead development. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. We already have a grandfathering system. I just don't know about extending it to multiple tiers. But All right. we'll figure it out. So we'll make it work. And uh, the other the other reason is that it is full of amazing content right now. They did Spring Break on Float Plane, um, which involved a whole bunch of exclusives. So we've got Labs Hide and Seek. We've got extras from the uh, bidet shoot with uh, Ludwig. We've got Tanner revisiting Black Lab <laughs> Computers. He yeah. went back for a yeah. six month update to see what it looks like now. There was the departmental airplane paper airplane battle. Um, Which I totally won. Don't bother uh, checking. Extras from the world's biggest gaming screen. And of course, the hour and a half long behind the scenes that uh, the reviews are in and people are loving. It's good. It has an infinity hey, yeah. like dislike wow. ratio. Um, I, and was, I was pretty upset at you in the video because you keep being like, the behind the scenes is going to be better than video. And I was like, screw you. The video's going to be great. <laughs> but uh, you're right. The behind the scenes is better. Well, it's oh. not. I didn't mean that in like an insulting way. I, 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 just know, meant, I, know. I just meant there was so much depth to everything that was going on that there was absolutely no possible way that it could be absorbed in a YouTube video length. Mm-hmm. There was no possible way. So the behind the scenes has all this additional context and all this additional interaction. Uh, you get to see, you know, just everyone kind of goofing around. Like the energy on the shoot was so positive. I've already, it's so long that I haven't had time to watch it, but I have literally marked out time to watch it tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, I'm a, I, genuinely quite excited. I think the best uh, the best review of it that I saw was someone saying <laughs> I clicked it without checking the timestamp and then didn't check how long I'd been watching and I was an hour and 15 minutes into it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good review. That's a good review. That's yeah. extreme. They watched a movie. Yeah, so kudos to the social team <laughs> mm-hmm. for putting that together. And of course, the editing team helps mm-hmm. by kind of earmarking bits that don't make the cut, uh, but they but they do go into the behind the scenes. And uh, oh yeah, I got to give credit to Sammy for just being an absolute unit because while you know Andrew did awesome, you know getting the the real video shot, the YouTube video shot, when Andrew could turn off his camera and take a break, <laughs> I mean Sammy had to keep rolling. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, oh. now's a really good time to get subscribed over on Floatplane. We've got a ton of really great content over there, and of course, the entire back catalog as well. All right, I think that was it for merch messages that were explicitly directed at David. Okay, now that we started acknowledging them, a couple more <laughs> of them came in. Um, okay, no, no. Okay, no. I think I think you're good. I think you're good, David. Yeah. I think that. Well, I, think I wanted I to ask that chat way. question because I haven't seen very many comments. One about my favorite joke in the entire video, which is the Mad Max joke, where a hundred people enter, one person gets rich. And I'm very disappointed no one has commented about that, because I think that's a brilliant joke. Oh, I thought, I thought it was hilarious. It's so yeah. funny. Yeah. It's, uh, it's one of those things I was a little worried about, mm-hmm. because you know, I mean, you know how Reddit can be. Uh, the, the, fact that, the fact that actors have to have it in their contract, that they can't like be mean as part of their mm-hmm. character because then fans might not like them anymore. They might think they're me like that kind of thing. The fact that that has to exist. I mean, George Carlin 
once did a bit about how, you know, okay, whatever. We, we've talked about this already. <laughs> um, but that was one of those lines that honestly, I read it. That's David's line. That's not my line. Um, I read it and I went, can I trust the audience to be smart enough to know that this is a line? I am playing <laughs> a character. And I wasn't sure, but I thought it was so funny it's and I thought one. it was so worth it. Yeah. That was one in, before it got to you, I was told, I don't think people will get that. You should cut it. And I was like, I will not. I will fight. <laughs> it has <laughs> to make it. One of the things that I liked about that was even if you didn't get it from like a Mad Max reference, it's still funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It still works. Yeah. So, and it's just more funny if you get the reference. The other thing I was wondering too, I wish we had a tracker, but we, we, we had that PS5 uh, jailbreaking joke that has a link in the description because we faked, you know, the, 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 the the UI to make it look like we had a hacked PS5. And if you click the link, it's a Rick roll. And I really wish I could know how many people click that link with. Oh, did like, we not use we a tracked URL? I didn't know that was a thing. We have if, one. Shit. Yeah. If you yeah. want something like that in the future, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, we, we but, have uh, our own set up for, chat, for sponsors. Chat, some of you guys can let me know. What, uh, how many people uh, oh, <laughs> clicked clear, on it? Clear There's already people says saying I clicked that, that screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. There's a lot of people saying they clicked it. <laughs> That's awesome. Hate and love you. Clicked it. I clicked it. Clicked it. Yeah. And Twitch chat. Yeah. I mean, well, those guys are idiots. So I'm, <laughs> I love you, Twitch. I love you, Twitch chat. Ooh, I love you, Twitch chat. Watch ads. Watch ads. Um, <laughs> Colton. Colton turned the ads back on. That's why the ads are back on. Ah. So Good I remember job, I kept Colton. turning them off. Yeah. Yeah. So Colton turned them on. He told me not job. to touch it anymore. <laughs> yeah. like, okay. All right. Fine, buddy. So good. All right. Good all right. Golden. Thank you so much for hanging You're around here today, Colton. David. My pleasure. Thank all you right. so much for having me. All right. Take care. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. Moving on to your regularly scheduled programming. Oh, wait. Are you going to? No, before we do that, uh, we got to talk about our collaboration. I was just going to say, are you going to suit up? Yeah, dog. Yeah. Yeah. You guys might There's have noticed. There's two different sizes in there. Oh, okay. Hold on. I'll make sure I get the right size then. I don't remember. Actually, this seems like the kind of thing that David would want. Hey, David. Yeah? Before you wander off, yeah? let me just see if I have your size here. I think you'd be into this. Okay. Uh, we got one extra. Are you a medium or a large? Uh, probably large these days. No. Oh. I need a medium. Womp womp. Okay. All I'm right. Ready for my pecs chat. Check this out. <laughs> Check this out. We heard from the Terry Fox Foundation, who... Oh. We have never actually collaborated with, even though we've talked about Terry a little bit on the show before. And um, basically the extent of it is that they were like, hey, it would be super chill uh, if you guys if you guys wore the shirts that we're doing this year. And then there's a hold on. There's a message inside here. Ah, ah, here it is. Uh, that I just wanted to read. Actually, here. Uh, Luke, do you want to read yeah. this? Because I'm probably going to cry if I do it. So um, I'm just going to change into my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna throw mine on thanks david it would be a really funny combination of you like flexing in the shirt him crying and i'm reading out the note <laughs> i would find that very entertaining oh, thank you for the shirt. uh yeah the terry fox foundation terry's courage and determination to always keep going no matter what continues to inspire millions of canadians 44 years after his iconic marathon of hope the Terry Fox Foundation is kicking off the 2024 Terry Fox run by once again teaming up with Ryan Reynolds to launch a limited edition shirt that features the tagline, no matter what, as a reminder of Terry's strength, persistence, and commitment to fundraise for cancer research. Canadians can now order the limited edition shirt at terryfox.org with all proceeds supporting critical cancer research in Canada. We encourage you to share a photo wearing the shirt alongside a caption outlining how you'll honor Terry's dream of a world without cancer tagging at terry fox foundation and hashtag no matter what on april 12th the same day that terry began his marathon of hope in 1980 canadians will be able to register and begin fundraising for this year's terry fox run which will take place on sunday september 15th 2024 thank you so much for your support absolute chad how did i read that i don't know properly I don't know. That it's, was... it's an important message. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, you can you can, you got another gear, man. Uh, so, guys, go check that out. We're gonna we're gonna throw uh, at, Dan. Do you mind throwing some links in the in the chat for everyone, and we'll throw that in the video description. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, um, there was. Uh, I think this was supposed to go out next week, but uh, registration for the Fox Run will open on April twelfth. Oh, okay. 
Uh, did, we, did we jump the gun? I think so. I'll throw That's some. Uh, I'll throw I thought some we messages. were late. We ended up being early. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? We can give it another shout out. Yeah, we're week. gonna give. We're gonna get you guys a reminder next week. Okay, so uh, let's. Uh, Dan, do you mind actually making a note of that as well to make Absolutely. sure that we get a reminder in there next week? Can they buy the shirt now though? I am unsure. There's already people in full plane chat saying they're donating already. Awesome. Okay, uh, great. Well, you can always just donate. Like that's cool too, because like the shirts. The sh- I mean. You know, it's no LTT shirt, but yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's it's a cool shirt. But realistically, what they need is not shirt sales. What they need is money. Uh, yeah. The Terry Fox Foundation has done absolutely incredible work over the last four and a half decades uh, in the fight against cancer. And you know what? F- cancer. Um, let me just I see. do like b- both the shirts are cool, but your long sleeve having the writing on the arm is yeah. like pretty sweet. There we go. I think it's that way. Yeah, yeah. No matter what, let's go. That's pretty cool. All right, so uh, here it is. Just head on over to Ways to Give over here. You can donate once. You can donate monthly. Um, yeah, absolutely incredible, incredible organization. Do they? All right. Thanks, Dan. Oh, show off the back of the shirt. Hold on. What's on the back? I don't, I don't there is writing on the back. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, hold on. You want to read it for me? No matter the distance, no matter the obstacles, no matter the journey, no matter the odds, no matter what, uh, Terry Fox run for cancer research. All right, cool. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Um. Okay. Should we jump right into the show? Yes. Oh, what do you want to do? Should we do? Should we do AI is just underpaid foreigners? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Amazon. <laughs> Amazon will be phasing out its cashierless checkout system called Just Walk Out, which launched in 2016. You may remember that was one of my first big controversies, actually. It might have been, might have been the first big one. I think that was the first time I was ever covered in mainstream news. Who That's, never talks about me unless it's something right. negative. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it launched in 2016. We went and checked out the Amazon Go store, which uh, was in Seattle and was the very, very first prototype of that. Um, It was available at 27 of their 44 Amazon Fresh grocery stores. And the idea was that it was supposed to allow customers to scan in at the door, then have the items that they pick up tallied and automatically rung up by a machine vision system using cameras and sensors. Uh, my understanding was it was more than just cameras. Like there were weight sensors on, on the shelves and stuff like that. However, it was recently revealed that the system was actually heavily dependent on a large team of over a thousand overseas workers based mostly in India. Now, when I say underpaid, I'm sure that Amazon was above the legal limit in India. But what I will say is that, you know, probably they weren't paid that much compared to amazon's balance sheet if you are interested in this uh there's a lot of coverage on these groups and it's like really bad uh so amazon claim i mean i'm sure they'd rather be working on this than you know training like gore algorithms or whatever which is another thing that they do amazon mechanical turk i'll jump over to my screen really quick oh no what is this they definitely don't just uh work for the you know amazon walk-in stores this is a service that you can get from amazon for a global on-demand 24 7 workforce did you know you can hire people what the fuck does amazon mechanical turk mean i don't know am i missing something here i don't know no, seriously though, what does mechanical Turk mean? Like, uh, can, can, like, what, what, what is the, what is the, what is this branding? M Turk offers developers access to a diverse on-demand workforce through a flexible user interface uh, or direct integration okay. with a simple API. Hold on a second. Can I just say that that use of the word diverse <laughs> is quite possibly <clears throat> the most toxic that I have ever encountered ever i wonder if they count it in like in their like company diversification organizations can harness the power of crowdsourcing via m turk for a range of use cases such as micro work human insights and machine learning development 
So cool, dude. So Amazon claimed that these workers were mostly tasked with improving its machine learning algorithms by annotating training footage. Yes. Um, and that is totally a thing. That doesn't mean that AI is just low wage workers from overseas. Uh, okay. Apparently Mechanical Turk was a, f I, I remember this because I looked it up when I first heard about this. Mechanical Turk was a, a chess playing robot, a fake chess playing robot. Okay. Yeah, I still probably wouldn't have gone with that. Oh, yeah, definitely not. For sure. Cool. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that is, a, that is a real thing. There's a fraudulent chess machine. That makes it actually genuinely funnier to me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the Mechanical Turk, also known as the uh, Automaton Chess Player, uh, or simply the Turk, was a fraudulent chess playing machine constructed in 1770, which appeared to be able to play a strong game of chess against a human opponent for it. For 84 years, it was exhibited on various tours. The machine survived and continued giving occasional exhibitions until 1854, when a fire swept through the museum where it was kept destroying the machine. Afterwards, articles were published by a son of the machine's owner, revealing its secrets to the public that it was an elaborate hoax... <laughs> Imagine naming part of your company. <laughs> it's like uh, LTT's new product, distributed fraud. <laughs> and we'll 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 use the diverse people. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I love how the third benefit of Mechanical Turk is reduced cost. Yeah. Oh, they talk about how great the, the team is, and then they're like, reduce cost! Oh. Okay. So anyway, hold on, hold on. Okay, so back to back to that just because you are using humans to validate the data, that does not mean that it's not machine learning. It can still be machine learning. Machine learning needs to be reinforced. And you can't just have another machine reinforce the other machine. You actually have to have humans go in and say, "Okay, no, no, that was that was a sandwich. Uh that was not a wrap." Right? Um Okay, sorry. People, so, are, people are yelling at me to read the next paragraph. Um, oh no! So, I, and I, I skimmed it. Drac Ryu says, "Wait, is this Amazon's April Fool's joke?" No, this thing has been around for quite a while. Yeah, um, sorry. So, yeah, the part that I think they want me to read because people are saying the next paragraph, other people are saying the third paragraph. I think it's the third one. Uh, the Turk was in fact a mechanical illusion that allowed a human chess master hiding inside to operate the machine. So it's a it's a hidden person inside of a oh, thing wow. that you think is a machine. So it got too real here. Yeah. Okay. I think they're being like super literal. They're like, this is an AI program that is actually a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> the Soylent is made out of people. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. It's not quite that. Well, <laughs> I don't know anything about the like working conditions or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, this is this is a hundred percent still machine learning. The fact that thirty percent of them worked without human intervention is is something. Um, but that's more like probably where they expected to be within a few months of launch, yeah. not where they expected to be eight <laughs> years on from the launch. Uh, according to a report by The Information, around 70% of transactions required the intervention, intervention or assistance of an unseen offsite employee as of 2022. This apparently sometimes resulted in customers waiting hours before receiving a receipt. That makes sense. Amazon will, however, continue with another cashierless feature that it's been experimenting with since 2020, Dash Carts, which are a combination of shopping cart slash self-checkout. Uh, this is similar to another odd case discovered in December when a supposedly AI-powered drive through Presto Automation, which also needed uh, overseas workers to step in 70% of the time according to a filing with the SEC. Okay, um, so our discussion question is, um, what is the value of making it feel like something is totally automated, even when it actually still takes a lot of human work to pull off? Uh, one thing not mentioned in our notes here is apparently uh, one of the other issues was that however, whatever labor they were saving in cashiers, um, they were more than paying for in the army of people that had to go around and make sure that all of the products were perfectly faced. So that the cameras could tell what people oh. were taking off the shelves. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I mean, I made a video about it because I legitimately thought it was really cool. 
it seemed I I expressed at the time some doubts about the the viability of it i was like wow it's kind of amazing that they can do this because like uh i don't see like you know machine vision indicators of any there's they don't have like a dot code on it that you know whatever angle it can kind of catch a glimpse of and 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 be sure like i i was i was really impressed but turns out i got bamboozled turns out mechanical turk worker number forty seven thousand two hundred eighty two was like i'm gonna charge this guy yeah. X amount of dollars. Yeah. While making a cent. Speaking oh, of which, man. Mechanical Turk fees. Oh, the minimum boy. fee is one cent per assignment. Okay. Well, that tells you everything you need to know about how much people are being paid. Because unless they can do It'll be a, 700 assignments well, hold per on. hour. Amazon's definitely taking some. No, I, just hold on. Hold on. No, no, I know. But that's not the math. And that's also minimum fee. I know. That's not the math, though. The math is that unless a worker oh, okay. I see what you're doing. can right, do right. 700 assignments per minute, which would be, or per hour, rather, which would work out to, what, 11 per, uh, 11 per second? Oh, no, hold on. I'm not, I can't math. Math me. Help me. So 700? Let's, let's say, let's, let's say, say 600. Let's say we're aiming for $10 an hour. Okay, so they've got to do, they've got to do what? A hundred every six minutes. No, a thousand every six, a thousand every six minutes. Okay, hold on, one cent. Oh my God. So that's a thousand things. So they've got to do a hundred every six minutes, right? Yeah. Okay. So 10 a second. So about 10 a second. Is that I right? I don't know. No, hold on. I hate... Can time be metric, please? Okay. A uh, hundred we should, we should, divided we should, by 60. We should hire a mechanical Here turk. we go. <laughs> so they have to do first. about 1.7 of those a second. And that assumes they are being paid $10 an hour, which is not a good wage. And that assumes Amazon takes nothing. A hundred every six minutes is 10 per second. Where did you get 1.7? Oh, I missed a zero. Oh. So... Every six minutes? Six minutes is how many seconds? A hundred every six. <laughs> <laughs> Help me out. Ah, oh, I'm so tired. Yeah, oh. I was blocking you. Oh. They tried metric time. People hated it. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so hold on a second, okay? Oh, I said that wrong. Is that what I said? I didn't mean to say that. I meant one minute. Okay, apparently... I Chat apparently can't do it either because they are all over the place. <laughs> Why are we so bad at math? Okay, all so right. We're trying okay. to do it fast. We gotta slow down. Okay, okay, okay. So it's one second. Or it's point uh, po uh, one cent one per cent. interaction. Okay, so it's a hundred interactions to a dollar. It's a thousand interactions to ten dollars. Right. So we've got a thousand interactions. If we want to get paid ten dollars in an hour, we divide a thousand by sixty. That's the number per minute. So that is sixteen point six interactions per minute. We divide it by sixty again. That means we've got about four seconds per interaction. I have done the math with a calculator this time. Four seconds per interaction. So, and that no, assumes no. you're being paid only ten dollars an hour, and that assumes that Amazon is taking no cut. What should, the it, fuck? Isn't it 3.6 per second? Yeah, I think so. But I think he rounded up. Yeah, I rounded. Okay. What the heck is going on here? Has anyone worked for this? I... Like anyone in chat? Man, that is, that is wild. Here's the Mechanical Turk worker page. Ooh. One dude said he did. I've worked for it. You need to pick jobs carefully. <laughs> okay. What does that mean? Uh, I think that... Oh, because the minimum payment thing. So if you select the job, I don't know if that's how this works, but if you select the job, you might be able to select ones that are higher value. I was also reading the page and there's like different qualifications. So maybe if you have a higher qualification, you can get higher value jobs. 
mm. and then you get paid more per job. Quite a few people in Floatplane Chat are talking about this. Uh, someone says MTurk is pretty dead now, but I used to do surveys for extra money in college. Uh, someone else said, I did some MTurk in college, never saw a cent. Uh, someone said, I knew someone who did work for MTurk. They said it was mostly just transcribing documents. Yes, mm. I did it for beer money in college. It's not full gig stuff. Um, interesting. Hmm. I've worked for less with a family business. Okay. I mean, yeah, fair enough, I guess. Um, in theory, says Matt Economist, I think the one cent ones are supposed to be click on the picture containing a bicycle. I mean, man, for how even long that, it takes me to solve a CAPTCHA sometimes. <laughs> yeah, because like even that, you'd have to do one every 3.6 seconds. And consistently yeah, like, with no... You better not blink or yeah. anything. Wow. All right. Anyway. Um, okay. 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 So Trash Cat says, I've, I've M Turk work, and you, yeah, yeah, you need to pick M carefully, <laughs> but generally minimum 10 cents per task in my experience. Okay. So that's quite a bit better. That's way better. That's literally but an order of those, magnitude better. Are those more complicated tasks, or is that click on the bike? Oh. Like, I wonder how much would have, someone would have been paid to identify your order value from that store. It must have been a lot higher. I would hope so, because you it, reviewing video footage can be very time consuming. It's not just scrub through, yeah, we're good, because they need to, they need to be sure. That's the whole idea, because if they're training the machine vision model and they, they feed it incorrect data, that's a, that's a disaster. Like, you, I mean, obviously people are human. They make mistakes from time to time, especially if they're being paid, you know, pennies per interaction or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the more of that noise that you feed into your model, the worse it is going to get. The, the more perfect the data you give it, the better. There's a very wide range of tasks, apparently. Some will give $5 for a 15-minute server. I have worked for MTurk and Sorry. used it to find participants for studies. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, there you go. M Turk, man. I don't know how I'd never heard of this before because apparently it's a big deal. Valen Cry said you'd have to be very diligent and hardcore to make uh, more than minimum wage. The good jobs are taken quick. Mm, that makes sense. To be sense. allocated within a couple minutes every few hours. Right. Because it's going to be like every, in people in every time zone around the world just like sitting there waiting for the, a gig to show up. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. I love Twitch chat. This, all this mech Turk stuff looks like outsourcing low paying jobs to third world countries legally. Good job. <laughs> Twitch gets case, there eventually. And in this case, I'm pretty sure they're all contractors. They get there eventually, Luke. Yeah. That's Twitch chat. They, they got it. They got it. They got it. They figured it out. The contractors thing makes it way worse. Here's a cookie. Um, yeah, the fact that they're contra uh, yeah, contractors. Because there can be really good things about being a contractor. There mm -hmm. can also be super bad things about being a contractor. And there's a little bit of a pattern of certain modern, like, web companies that need actual, like, people physically doing their jobs, using specifically contractors and paying very little. Eh, it's not great. Uh, you know what is great? Merch messages. That's true. You guys can interact with the show using a merch message. Don't do a super chat. Don't do a Twitch bit. The way to go is merch messages. All you got to do is head over to LTTstore.com and in the checkout, you're going to see a box anytime we're live where you can fill in a merch message. Uh, do we have any merch updates that are in the dock here, Dan? I don't, uh, I don't see anything here. Um, oh. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Right. We've got the uh, limited edition shirt that we did for April Fools. Yeah. These are going to be printing in, I believe, the next week or so. Well, going to printing in the next week or so. And then they will... Yeah, so it's going to be available... Oh, until tomorrow. This is, this is available until tomorrow. And then we're going to be hopefully printing them, yeah, over the next few weeks here. So they'll go out there. It's, uh, Sarah did this up uh, pretty quick. It's, uh, it's a welcome, welcome home shirt. It's got the, uh, the old house. Got the old, got the old Lambo car, which is... Uh, you know, it's going to be more of a reference to Ploof's car soon, I think, with what we're planning to do to it while he's on vacation. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I didn't want anyone to be jealous about the fact that he's getting free upgrades for his car. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it comes with a condition. 
Oh, boy. We get to decorate. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, it's going to be good. You should do um, a whole company paint party like last time. Yeah, so when you leave a merch message right in the box in the checkout, you will either have it show up down here, you are going to get a reply from producer Dan, or it will be forwarded to someone internally, and that person might be me and Luke, where we will address your merch message on the show. We're going to show you guys how it works. Dan's going to pick us a couple curated merch messages. But first, I've got a quick poll for him to set up for you guys before we do those so that you guys can weigh in on what you want to see. Uh, we're working on a new short. Short. We're working on a new shirt. And... We want it to have like a like a name tag holder mechanism of some sort. And we want your feedback on what you think is the best. So option A is a little reinforced D ring. So that's uh, like a little a little metal ring. So this is how it would sit. All right. There's option A. Luke, are you going to weigh in on this? Gonna... Sorry, I got linked to something that was... Option B, D ring with a little carabiner that can be tucked into the pocket when it's Ooh, not in use. I kind of like that. Okay, all right, hold on. So right, 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 this one has uh, options. So you can either hang it right off the D-ring or you could hang it off the carabiner if you have to uh, scan in on doors and stuff ah, like that. Okay. Yeah. okay, option C, simple folded webbing loop. There we go. And option D is D-ring and carabiner, base of pocket. Okay, so those are our four options, A, this, B, C, and D. Is this a, like, tougher shirt, or is this a dressier shirt? It's meant to be an everyday, everyday wear shirt. So we understand that a lot of our audience are, like, techs. Yeah. And they, they're going to be crawling under a desk sometimes. Okay. But they still got to look good. Okay, so it's like a little, it's not, you're that, not working in a mechanical shop, but you're not just sitting at a desk. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, yeah, it's a, it's, take a little bit more it's an that. office, office worker. Yeah. And when I say worker, I don't mean like you just have to sit at the computer. Got it. You can wear it for that. It's great for that too, but we want it to be a little bit tougher than that. Uh, all right. So here we'll get our results. I think here. in that case, if I had to vote, it would probably be. Are they saying B? Yeah. I'm thinking I'm saying B as well because if you need to slide around on the ground, being able to tuck the whole thing into the pocket mm. really easily seems like a cool feature. Yeah. That could be a bonus. I like that a lot. All right. All right, why don't we do a couple of merch messages? Sure, our first one here. Hey, Dinus, Duke, and Lan, do you have any tips for someone struggling to stay disciplined, whether it be for work or a hobby? Oh, man, I think Nike said it best. Like, Just do it. Yeah, I, I don't really know what else there is to say. You, you, you have to decide what's important, and you've got you've to commit. No excuses. There's there's a lot of different way. Like if you are incapable of doing that, there are other things you can do. Yeah. We talked about this on last WAN show, actually. Accountability buddy type yep. situation. Um, yeah, don't go to the gym by yourself. It doesn't work. You have to go with someone. You have there. Ha there has to be a reason. Unless they're sick all the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone. <laughs> I think. I think it's fair <laughs> to say that. Either everyone, or at least almost everyone, has better discipline planning ahead. Yeah. Everyone knows that they should work out tomorrow. Everyone knows that they should go grocery shopping on yeah. the weekend and cook their meals. But not everyone in the moment is going to feel like working out right now or going grocery shopping and cooking right now. Something I do specifically for both of those two things is like I'll pack my gym bag ahead of time. Yeah. And like I'll, I'll leave it like by the door. So that it's like... It's shaming you. Uh, yes. It's a reminder. The food thing, to prep it before you're hungry. And then when it's th that meal comes up, it's like, oh, you like could eat junk or you could go get some food or you could order delivery or whatever. But actually, the easiest option right now is eating the stuff you already prepped. So like remove barriers of difficulty and... Uh, I don't know if people are going to like this, but yeah, inc increase levels of like... You know, have a, have a buddy that does the thing with you or your partner or whatever else. Um, try to keep you keep you on it. Like have a workout buddy or or do meal prepping with someone else. Yep. I don't know. So I, um, I, I, I never book badminton by myself. I book it ahead of time because I know that, you know, I should go exercise and, you know, do stuff. And then when it's time to go, 
well, there's a lot of obstacles to not going. I'm going to have to pay anyway because I signed up ahead of time and I'm not going to be there. So they're going to be short people. So the rotations are going to be off. So So I better go. Someone in full point chat said, we have no friends. I actually don't agree that that's an excuse. Got him. Because not only is there a bunch of online communities where people are in the exact same boat and you could probably find an accountability buddy there. But I've found if you go to the gym, for example, if we're just using that, that one, it's actually quite easy to make friends. Everyone there is there for the same reason. Yeah. Everybody. And like, uh, like I made friends with this dude literally earlier this week because I saw he had lifting shoes and he finished a set and was just kind of standing there. So I walked up to him and was like, Hey, what's up? He's like, Hey, what's going on? I was like, I saw you have lifting shoes. How do you like those? And his whole, he just lit up. Everybody, if you ask them about like what they're doing or why, they spent all this time researching it. Yeah. They spent all this money on they've it. They're using so it actively. They've worked really hard. No one in their life cares at all. <laughs> like, not even a little bit. Wow, you sound uh, you sound mad. <laughs> it's I'm not mad. Are you mad, bro? It's just real. Because like. <laughs> <laughs> He's always trying to tell me about how much he lifted. I'm like, doesn't even care a little bit. Is that a lot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the worst one. That's the worst. Um, but like, sounds like a lot. Good job. Nobody cares. Gold star. But but that other person at the gym, yeah, might actually care. Yeah. So like, it's it's quite easy to make friends with people there. Um, if you if you work in an office, try to find someone else. Like if they're if they're often going out for food every lunch. You know, try to make a pact with them. Like, let's let's eat. Let's take our lunches together and eat together, and eat stuff we brought home, like brought from home. Like, let's make this like a thing. Hold each other accountable. Let's try to save some money, eat better, stuff like that. Um, and you don't even have to. You don't even have to do it because you're like, oh, I want to lose weight. You could do it because you want to just save some money. You can make great things at home. I don't know. It's an option. Oh man, common Twitch L. I actually hate you. No super chats. Just buy something from me and I'll mention your comment. So you'd rather just throw (laughs) money at the screen than get something in return? (laughs) This is actually better. (laughs) How can you not see that? Yeah, like I've I've had people at the gym. Well, I'll ask them about like a certain movement that they're doing or whatever. And it'll get, they get so excited about it. And like these, they don't know who I am. I'm just some random dude at the gym. Yeah. They'll get so excited about it that I they end up talking to me about it like far longer than I had hoped they would. I'm like ready to do my next set of whatever I'm doing. I'm like kind of hoping this person will stop talking, but they're just like so stoked to talk about this thing that they're really interested in. Oh um, no, they're still mad because they don't have to spend, because they don't have to spend shipping costs on their donation. <laughs> then just buy a gift card and never use it. Yeah. It's crazy. There's loopholes. It's, it's a, it's a, it's it, nuts. It, why do you want to give me money for nothing? Buy a backpack, set the Why? shipping address to like a, a homeless shelter. Boom. Sure. You donated a backpack. Like, oh man, you guys are killing me here. You're killing me. You know what? You know what? Banned. Boom. Oh! You lost your privileges. It finally happened. Oh! You lost your privileges. <gasps> All right. Look what you've done, Twitch. <laughs> No, wait, hold on. No, no, that's not, that's not the Bring right them thing. back. One person can't represent the whole. There. Yeah! Oh, never mind! Get wrecked! Uh. <laughs> uh, all right. Two, two other things I'll add, just yeah. really quickly. You, can, you just can't shut up about this. You are it's actually, true. you are actually a, perfectly exemplifying yeah. the phenomenon you're talking about. You get yes. a gym person talking about the bloody gym. Yeah. They can't shut up. It is a problem. It's I, not possible. I could literally go on forever. I've, I've done it to Dan. I'm, I'm living vicariously through Luke. <laughs> <laughs> is it it's not it's true though i right? think every time i have brought it up people are like well have you tried this because it's all it's all interesting and i'm like no <laughs> the research shows <laughs> <laughs> i've done I've did you up. hurt your shoulder uh, well uh, actually i didn't hurt my shoulder uh, <laughs> i read the papers on the <laughs> full like partials are good for the uh um anyways no but like there's there's two things that i use as well one is try to do better than yesterday so if you're if you're like oh i I don't want to take the stairs today i'm tired and then just let that thing in the back of your head go like you did it yesterday 
you did it yes you found a way yesterday and then it's like oh fine and then you go do it it's great uh, yeah. um and then the oh, i had another one well that's no, fine because it's time it's to do another merch right. message dan hit us <laughs> okay sure uh let's see hello wan.dll prevents dill hello wan.dll uh, I'll be starting my first home lab soon and would like some advice on security. What's some ways I can keep my family safe while they use my services, such as Jellyfin? Well, I mean, if you are the one running the services, I don't think there's much that you have to do to keep your family safe. Um, They're a threat. Your family? No, the, this person. Oh. Um, How do I protect them from myself? Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get flamed for this. I, I know I know it. Uh -oh. I know it. Realistically, unless you are some kind of running uh -oh. a jellyfin server and like having a port open on your router, probably fine. Is it vulnerability? Yes. It is. Are you running Windows Defender? Probably. It's probably right. It's probably fine. Um I mean, I would say, I would say, you know, a more realistic concern would be, you know, how do I manage the parental settings to ensure that young kids don't just have access to all the R-rated movies in my library? Like, I, I, I would, I would be more focused on the practical concerns. Just, you know, change your default passwords. Keep everything up to date. You know, it, the the basics, the basics. Just make sure you're going in and making sure everything's chill. Uh, check the logs for the devices that have connected to your network once in a while. Use guest Wi-Fi. Guest Wi-Fi. Totally awesome. Uh, if you want to be, if you want to be a little bit, <clears throat> if you want to be a little bit more careful, you know, have a really strong password on your main Wi-Fi. Like there's just... If you're asking this and you have IoT devices running on your main network... You're addressing the wrong problem, I would also oh, say. Oh, yeah, that's another one. I mean, we don't know that you do. It's possible that, you, that you've that you got Just a separate a lot of IoT do. network. Yep. My family was murdered by an open jellyfin port, you monster. <laughs> <laughs> I saw someone say LastPass was hacked by a dev having Plex on their system or whatever. But that's almost like proving Linus's point. If you are a person that would be a very particularly interesting person to hack for whatever reason like a dev on a piece of security software that stores the passwords to like millions of people's accounts yeah um then yeah doing that type of stuff you're opening yourself and if up you're that person then i shouldn't be advising you on cybersecurity anyway go figure it out yeah <laughs> so there's that yeah uh all right got it um do you want to do another talk oh we should do sponsors let's get sponsors Should we do three merch messages read the sign no did we do it though no we we're, we're a little bit uh, strange on time let's do sponsors and then yeah the show sponsors. is brought to you by seasonic one of the hardest parts of our april fools prank or video was trusting dennis to be in my house again uh my notes just say briefly talk about the car break-in prank so i come out of the house and see this Someone is running away. A bunch of stuff is spilled. You can tell I'm not what? chasing super hard because I... Yeah. I, I, I had a bone to pick with you about that. Oh. What was that? Uh, okay, hold on. Apparently, we are taking a break from sponsor spots for a second here. We can go. We can talk about this later. Okay, you fine. Just just write. I, I made a little section at the bottom of the doc for just like things to talk about later. Then okay. Uh, okay, sorry, Dan. You can take back do whatever it is that you do to yeah. Sure. Anyway, no idea. Yeah, that that's me. Um, so anyway, I come out of the house and there's a, a bunch of stuff from my car just like dumped on the on the sidewalk and there's a guy running away in a hood and um we have a float plane exclusive where you guys can see the whole setup how they got this all ready and uh how they bamboozled me uh they had vance borrow my keys to like something like i don't think about it if vance asks for my keys i'm like okay I'm yeah sure, go for it yeah. um so you can check it out on float plane right now so basically i don't trust anybody anymore except seasonic seasonic <laughs> makes some of the most reliable power supplies you can find and they stand by their products <laughs> they've recently upped their warranty to 12 years and if you are literally 
anyone. You hate noisy fans, something that Seasonic is very well aware of, and that's why their Vertex GX850 has hybrid fan control, which means a quieter system without any cost to performance. It's fully modular, it's 80 plus gold certified, and the best part is Seasonic is running a bunch of promotions on their power supplies this month. So just because you don't want to cheap out on a power supply doesn't mean you don't want to save, so why not check out Seasonic at the link down below. We really believe in their products. We love them and we are proud to promote Seasonic. The show is also brought to you by, oh, look at that, another longtime partner, Squarespace. Some companies have beautiful websites. You know how they do it? Using our sponsor, Squarespace. Um, <laughs> they might not, <laughs> you can build a great website with Squarespace, even if you're a tiny, crappy company working in a tiny, crappy office with your horrible boss. That's, that's in my notes here, guys. Uh, Squarespace has the magic to make your backyard business presentable online. It's an all-in-one platform with a variety of customizable themes for your website. And with their award-winning designer templates, your business looks like so, <laughs> looks so much more believable. Oh my goodness, you guys, <laughs> whether you're a local business, a blogger, or an artist, Squarespace has you covered. <laughs> or, a, or a, okay, uh, <laughs> or a, a, a egomaniac. Uh, all the templates seamlessly work on mobile devices as well. And Squarespace offers marketing features, including SEO support, email campaigns, and social tools. Plus, with 24-7 support, someone will always be there to answer your questions. So head to squarespace.com slash when, and you can get 10% off today. Finally, the show is brought to you by MSI. Building a PC is all fun and games until you realize you've spent 10 hours trying to find the right hole. Really, Dennis? So stop the hassle. You can now get the pre-built MSI Aegis RS2 gaming PC. Yeah, MSI mentioned this to me back at CES. They are like a huge system integrator now. What? Yeah, it's ready to level up your gaming experience, packing a punch with the latest huh. Core i9 14th gen processors and MSI's GeForce RTX 4080 Super graphics card. It delivers solid performance for all your gaming adventures, plus it has liquid RGB cooling, whatever that means. With MSI's LED button, you can easily adjust it with their Mystic Light software, and you can enjoy all the latest features from MSI's motherboards, including blazing fast Wi-Fi 7, support for DDR5 memory, and PCIe Gen 5. And don't forget to dive into the fun with MSI Center for even more customization. Get your hands on the MSI Aegis RS2 at the link down below, and... Oh, yeah, that's it, at the link down below. All right, cool. Huh. That's different. Okay. Let's pick some bones. Yeah. What the heck? What the heck what? Your car's broken into. I'm like, yeah. I'm watching Dennis lumber away and then for some reason be so exhausted afterwards, which I really, <laughs> you even asked him about it. I was the whole time when he starts walking back and he's like huffing and puffing. I was like, you literally went around the corner. Like, yeah, he didn't go very far. I mean, you saw him try to fight me, right? <laughs> yeah. Buddy was gassed. <laughs> Wait, you were, you were there in person, so it didn't really yes. make it into the edit because Dennis edited it. But he, Dude. man, the number of times he should have been disqualified from that match. I was actually frustrated. Like, not acting frustrated. I was actually frustrated. At, like, he, he was taking... It didn't make any sense. It wasn't fair. He was taking extremely long breaks. In fairness, I got the same breaks. Yeah, but... I didn't need them. You would have... He was completely unable to fight and would have been disqualified. Yeah. Like, he couldn't move. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, he, he apparently hasn't been working on his cardio enough. No. So he, he jogs around the corner, and yeah. you just, like, speed walk after him? Well... Why, why did you even go if okay. you're going that slowly? Okay, so there's there's a number Because you of, only caught him because he gave up, because he was probably too tired from going around one corner. <laughs> there's a number of elements here. Okay. One. Oops. I keep absolutely nothing of value in my car. Nothing. Ever. Oh, the backpack was Chase's car. Okay. Yeah. There so was... What, what was, like, spewing out of the car? Uh, that was the contents of my glove box. So, basically, there's a, Tissues a, there's a, a power charger. inverter, there's okay. some napkins, there's some sanitary pads, um, there's, like, uh, the, oh, there's some extra hardware for my offset license plate mount. There is nothing of value in my car, ever. Okay. Like, if I go into a restaurant, you've seen me do this. 
Hey, you bring the backpack. I bring my backpack in with me. I leave. I mean, look at that stupid thing. Yeah. If that's not a high profile a target, target. Yeah. I don't know what is. Totally. So I make sure there's nothing in it. It's clean. You look in the window, you're like, damn, that's a clean car. Like nothing, not, not even crumbs of food. There's nothing in there. So that's number one. What am I chasing him for? Nothing. <laughs> so you had, you had that thought. Yeah. I know there's nothing in my car, but your, your glass is broken. Number two. That glass is not going to be unbroken by catching the guy. I'm going to go through the exact same insurance rigmarole, regardless of what happens with him. So what difference does it make? Number three. What if the guy's armed? So okay. I don't know. Okay. What I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go put my body and my life, which I value by the way, I'm gonna go put that in even if the even if the risk was one percent. I'm going to take a 1% chance to, to have a violent encounter with someone over literally nothing of value. So here's my counter and to glass all that, of that. Hold on, I'm not done yet. And glass that is already broken. Yeah. The glass cannot be unbroken right. through anything other than insurance and dealing with the hassle of taking it to the shop means. Finally, number four, I caught a glimpse of his face. And I thought it might be Dennis. Okay. So you followed actually, him at all because you thought it might be. Because my thing is, like, if the first three are true, which is fair, I mean, I fairly was, good reasoning, why go anyways? Well, I was noting... Because you were putting Chase... Yeah, but... Because he was so slow. He was also... <laughs> so, no, his speed varied. It was hard to tell from the footage. Oh, okay. But he, like, booked it and then, like, slowed down. It was like he wanted me to chase him. Uh, so I was like... Now, to be clear, when I say I saw the face... He kind of had his hood down. I didn't know you it was... You wouldn't know for sure. I didn't know it was Dennis. Decent distance, hood on. So I didn't know. And I told him. I told him at the time. I was like, you got me. Because even though I, I had all those thoughts, and even though I thought... It, and he actually found the frame where like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Where I was like... <laughs> like he's like, is this... Because this? I smile a little bit. <laughs> But then, but then, no, no, because, but he got me because after that, the, the fake glass, the fake glass was what convinced me. So they rolled down the window and they made sugar glass and like put it. So I've gone through that before. I've actually had my car broken into multiple times and that feeling of kind of shock, not, not shock, but like that feeling where it, it actually takes a second to process when you, when you come into a building and it's been broken into, everything is right except the things that are wrong. Yeah. And it can actually take a second. So this one time I, I parked my car outside of our garage overnight because there was like something in the way. And I come out in the morning, I sit down all the way in my driver's seat. And the first thing that registered for me was actually that the seat was way back. Interesting. I didn't actually see because... I'm not in, I'm not doing a pre-flight check on my car. I'm not inspecting it. I'm just getting in and driving. And so I sat down into my seat and went, what well, this heck? isn't quite right. Yeah. And then, oh. and then I noticed yeah. the shattered glass all over the passenger seat. So like it, it can, it can take a, a, a second for something to click. And, um, and so wh when I saw the shattered glass, I actually like, had that click moment i relived yeah, yeah, yeah the like my car's been broken into like the glass was the the thing that made me realize two times when my car had been broken into so what dennis did whether it was intentional or not yeah. was he tapped into like a, 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 an experience I've had before, That's he tapped really into a memory. There's no way he knew that. And recalled that emotional state that made me sort of be dismissive of my suspicions and kind of go, my car's been broken into. Yeah. So it wasn't the right color. And like, yeah, some of it was like almost oh, a yellow. yellowy because well, it's like sugar it's glass. cooked sugar. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but some of it was okay. Yep. So and like I wasn't looking be, that close. You know, maybe it got some gross water on it or whatever. That's what did the discoloring. Yeah. Uh, the video is on, on Floatplane, so you can check it out. Um, yeah. The, the only time my car's ever been broken into was there. Nice. I, I don't know if you remember, but I... 
Oh, hold on. So uh, here's where they're here's where they're setting up. Uh, I don't this, know. This, so that's when they were preparing the fake photo of Chase's car. Oh, here. Uh, if yeah. you go, if you go back, you saw the orange backpack. So he's editing it right there. Okay, yeah, because this they, is this is the fake. He's trying to use AI to generate the glass, and then he ends up just doing it himself. Yeah, so he um, he he kind of pl- really planted the seed in my mind of cars being broken into. Yeah. Was Which like, was really smart, actually. Yeah, I honestly, at the time, I was like, why are you telling me this? Like, cars can be broken into anywhere. Like, yeah. I, I don't really, sure, I guess. Um, yeah, so they had, they got Sammy to have me shoot an intro for something that he didn't need at all. Um, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll shoot an intro for you. I mean, I like to be helpful. So here he is making the broken glass. Yeah, see, some of it is really nicely colored, and then other bits are, are yeah. the yellowy sugar glass. Yeah. Uh, Dennis told me, by the way, this might be in the video, I'm not sure, but he told me at the time that they carefully did not get any sugar glass in my car. <laughs> there was definitely some in there, eh? There was sugar glass in the car. Yeah. There was sugar glass in the car. They got, ke- they, they burst one of the ketchup packets that was in my glove compartment. Oh, and no. And it got all over the passenger seat. Oh, no. It's like, uh, anytime punked Dennis him is with by any of your stuff. getting his car dirty. <laughs> And like dumped a bunch of my stuff onto the like wet, dirty sidewalk. And so yeah. I'm like, okay. Cool. <laughs> Thank you for that. Like what? <sighs> anyway. Um, yeah, my, my car got broken into at the old office. And I had, I had this, the first nice piece of clothing I ever bought was this leather jacket from Danye that mm. was called, the name of the jacket was Luke. Nice. And I didn't know the that Luke. until I had picked it. I was like, this is perfect. And then yeah, be. it was stolen out of my car. <clears throat> um, Sag. Oh, Tynan wants to know, scratched floor or dirty car more annoying? Definitely scratched the scratched floor. floor. That is permanent. Yeah. That's forever. It's like a diamond. <coughs> <coughs> diamond floor, baby. Um, yeah, I might have to fight Dennis again, so we'll see. <laughs> Budron asks, why do you have ketchup in your glove box? Well, where else would I keep it? Under the seat? They don't give out ketchup packets by default at fast food restaurants anymore. Oh, so it's for if you, like, forget to ask Yeah. For okay. Then I have a ketchup packet. And it turns think- out that if you keep them forever, they do go bad. <laughs> in case anyone was wondering about that. Was that one bad? No. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. It had been replaced recently, because now I know. <laughs> well, some of them don't have expiry dates on them. <laughs> some do. I just love that this is, like, an actual problem that you've sought a solution for, found issues with the solution, and improved upon and mm-hmm. iterated that solution. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. That's my whole life, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> like what? I'm gonna great. eat fries without ketchup. <laughs> this actually does sound like a particular Linus problem that mm-hmm. you would like seek out a solution for. I oh, fully yeah. would believe that. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And like, man, I, I, you need exactly the right amount of ketchup. I take my fry and I like. You've probably I seen me this. do this. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I, I yeah. put a strip of ketchup on the whole fry <laughs> so the ratio is right. <laughs> yeah. I've 100% seen that. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> <sighs> okay, what are we doing? Two more topics? Three more sure. topics? Somewhere around there. <coughs> oh, okay. Dan wants to do merch messages. All right. Sure, Dan. Yeah. I don't think we have that many this week. We're a little out of order, unfortunately. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've got some uh, I've got some <coughs> curated ones for you here. All right, hit me. Um, nice. I don't know. What do you think about that top one? I mean, uh, I haven't paid enough attention to it but luke might know and buddy spent like 500 dollars, so i guess we can uh whoa yeah uh, bought a screwdriver a backpack a other more different screwdriver a stubby screwdriver a banana for scale a whole bunch of bits a sticker pack and a shaft extension uh so is this is this stop that's, killing games that's right yeah and i don't know i've seen this guy for a while do you want me to do you want me to read this out yeah, sure. If you know what's going on, yeah, because I, I haven't, I haven't, this is, I haven't looked into this. So yeah, hi Linus and Luke. What do you think of Ross Scott's call to action against Ubisoft killing the crew? Do you think we have any chance of preventing future games from being destroyed? 
Um, now I've followed this guy for a while. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So maybe Dan can do this merch <laughs> maybe, message because maybe, maybe. Luke and I haven't paid attention to this. I, I had had it flagged for me and I've seen some community sentiment around this that is like that this is something we need to be supporting, but I hadn't had a chance this week to dig into it. Yeah. I've seen his videos, but I, I'm not up to date on this. Yeah. He had some really good thoughts. I think, I hope it was him ages ago about always online games mm -hmm. that are single player that the companies go oh well you know we can't afford the server upkeep anymore and so the game that you have paid for you are now no longer able to play and so a lot of uh a lot of people will take these servers and host them themselves i know there's a bunch of different games that kind of have community hosted servers and there's no more dedicated you know first party ones anymore um, so I think this is probably a call well, towards that, right? A, a game that Linus and I enjoyed to play every now and then is like that. Um, mm. Subcom, I don't remember, what's Supreme the... Commander Forged Alliance. Forged Alliance, yep. or wait. Forged Alliance Forever is the, yes, uh, the community takeover of the game that was allowed to happen after gas-powered games went... <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, but was it was it gas powered that let them do it? Like some some there was like a I forget which party ultimately uh, enabled that, but it's pretty cool. And recently, I think it's City of Heroes. Is There's unfortunately a lot, yeah. um, and I think the worst offender is probably single player games. Sorry, Forge Alliance Forever was a, an example of a good thing. Yeah, the we're, community we're did currently take trying over. to talk uh, about good things. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it was City of Heroes that recently just publicly was like, yeah, people can host their own servers and iterate on the game and everything and good luck. I don't remember what it was. I might be seeing the wrong one. Yeah. But there are some few good examples. There are good examples. And I think those are probably the outliers in the situation. There's mostly bad ones. It's mostly like this. Yeah. Um, right. And, and it's very frustrating, especially because there's still an active community, even though they may be small, but they're still active. Well, yeah, the, this blurb here says, um, the video game The Crew, this is on StopKillingGames.com, this blurb says, the video game The Crew, published by Ubisoft, was recently destroyed for all players and had a player base of at least 12 million people. That's an interesting number. Yeah, that's not a I'm, small... I'm assuming that was at one point in time. <laughs> I can't imagine there's that many people playing the crew right now. Or yeah. There's no way they'd be shutting it down. But I mean... Yeah. They might be surprised, yeah. I don't know. Due to the game's size and France's strong consumer protection laws, this represents one of Peak, the best yeah. opportunities to hold a publisher accountable for this action. We are If we are successful in charges being pressed against Ubisoft, this will have a ripple effect on the video games industry to prevent publishers from destroying more games and then there's like buttons to click where you can take action in, in various Sign countries petitions that you're in. and stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah that's right i watched his video on the crew about a month ago it came out dead game news is the series yeah yeah it's brutal we talk about it on wan show all the time um this seems like a good thing to jump on the train for so yeah i mean yeah. Look, I'll say this is not a creator that I'm pers I'm not personally acquainted with, so I don't. Yeah. Um, but you know what I do know is I agree with the cause, and if all you're being asked to do is sign a petition that says that you don't think this is okay, then I think that's something that I can wholeheartedly recommend without, like I already said, doing any due diligence on this. Um, I intend to sign the petition once the show is over, and I I can do that. Um, yeah. I do think yeah, please that, don't right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm busy right now. I, I do think that these companies need to be held accountable. And I think that if there are no monetary consequences, not only is nothing ever going to change, it is going to get so much worse. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of especially younger consumers don't even understand what they've lost yet. Even the games that do still exist the 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 modes the ways of playing them that have changed as games as a service evolve are gone i mean think back to think back to what it was like when you finally quit wow and how badly you wanted to just play classic wow again and blizzard finally did it and then my understanding is they kind of bunged it up because didn't they start like updating it again yeah and like <laughs> you you already can't actually play classic again now nice because it progressed through the expansions so it's already I, so what they need to do is they just need to do like a like a wipe system yeah there are some there are other games that do that like if i remember correctly everquest has a very similar like you can play original like 
1999 EverQuest or whatever it was, 2001. I don't remember. Maybe RuneScape was 1999. Whatever. Um, and they they wipe frequently. And most of the active players, as far as my understanding goes, for the EverQuest one, are on the servers that are fresh. Because people want to play fresh experiences where everyone's starting back at scratch, all that type of stuff. Um, but, yeah. Didn't the RuneScape, speaking of RuneScape, didn't the RuneScape creator just make a new game? Actually, you can still play Classic Era. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think I forgot that was a thing. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I don't know. Older school RuneScape. Yeah. Is yeah. Classic Era wiping, though? I don't think it's wiping. They're just permanent servers, right? I don't know. Whatever. Either way. Um, okay. Next up. Yep. Hey, LLD, is there a reason why 256 characters is the default max path on NTFS still? We run into this on my work NTFS server, and it's infuriating, especially because some apps don't serve proper errors. Man, that's a question for a Windows developer. <laughs> Um, if I had to guess, I would say it's because it hasn't been a priority to fix it. I mean, there's so, so many things in Windows or Gmail or basically anything you use that, um, just haven't been updated because it's not the most important thing I can work on today. Right. And I mean, we run into that all the time. Stuff that theoretically is a quick bug fix, but in practice is just... Never the thing that's on fire today. I've, ta I've talked about that to a few people here where it's like, I, I wouldn't worry so much about your job security in the sense of you running out of work to do. <laughs> yeah. There is effectively an infinity list of tasks that we could do. Yeah. Yeah. Don't like, stress. The, the biggest problem is figuring out what item on this infinity list is the thing that we should work on right now. And sometimes it can be frustrating because someone can be really passionate about one of the things on the list. Yeah. But there's this other thing that maybe it has to be done for some. And you might not fully understand why that other thing is more important, but it is. Yeah. At least we strongly believe it is. I guess people make mistakes. We get things wrong. Uh, this is a suggestion. Yeah. Quantum Rand in Floatplane Chat says, uh, try asking Dave's Garage on YouTube if there's anyone who is likely to both A, no, and B, dish. I would say that it would be <laughs> Dave's Garage. Um, also, apparently, this is according to Posidron, there is a uh, registry edit where you can go in and you can change it to a higher limit. Uh, you have to change uh, file uh, set, con current control set, control file system, long paths enabled. Uh, and that changes the limit, according to Matthew O, to 4,096 characters, which ought to be enough for anyone. That's a reference. <laughs> which Bill Gates apparently never said. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> there's, um, there's some reason why I had to do that in the past. I don't remember what it was. I think it was like development file paths. That we're just getting ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Developers, 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 slash developers, developers. developers. <laughs> just gotta go the nested folders for days. <gasps> yeah. yeah. All uh, right, Dan. <laughs> sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, good evening, DLL. Question for you three or whoever answers. Ivory towers are very prolific in manufacturing companies, DOD subcontractors included. Uh, how do we better guard against detached decisions? I don't know. It's tough. Because even making a conscious effort to talk to people and work in the trenches at this company, as we've grown, it hasn't always been easy to fully understand the daily challenges that people have. Uh, we had someone raise a concern. So I was frustrated on a shoot recently when a prop that was integral to the intro was not sourced. Um, well, A, we, we had it at one point, but at some point we lost it. And then when we realized we lost it, we didn't source a new one. And I, 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 I landed on set and I was like, whoa, I can't arrive on set. And like the intro doesn't work because the prop I need for the intro isn't here. We don't have one. This was so preventable. And the conversation that ultimately came out of, out of that was, hey, we don't have a process for just anyone making a petty cash decision and then begging for forgiveness later. There just isn't a means for it. And 
it was a funny thing for me to think about because even before I ran my own company or whatever, that was a hundred percent something that I just did. If something was like 50 bucks and I knew that I could defend it to the CEO, I would just spend the $50 and worry about it later. But I, that is, that is not a recommendation. <laughs> if there, if there's no, for real though, right? Like I got away with being a bit of a maverick, but that's not, that's, that's not necessarily good you for would, your career. You now would deal with managing you back then. Oh God. <laughs> I, it would actually be like quite the clash. I would be very frustrated. Both yeah. of me would be very frustrated always. Yeah. Anyway, the point is <laughs> what came out of that was that, hey, we don't have a formalized, like one of uh, CEO Taryn's favorite words is explicit. We don't have a formalized process that gives people explicit permission to make a decision like that. Um, a lot of people just do it anyway. So, especially people who have been around since up, the I, old days and who have been doing it for years, but especially new people don't know. They don't realize they come from other companies where, where spending 20 bucks that you weren't allowed to spend could literally mean getting a dressing down. Right. Like I, and that's so, that's so foreign to me. Like I, that doesn't make sense in my world because I never worked in that environment and I'm not going to foster that environment here, but that's a thing. Inefficient. Yeah. I came across my supposed uh, approval limit. I don't remember when this was, like a few months ago or something, and just erupted with laughter. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> I, I have approved things wildly beyond this many times. Like, uh, okay, yeah. That's actually bad, though. I didn't know. No one told me. Oh, my God. Because the approval limits were set up when Floatplane was completely separate. So it was genuinely not communicated to me at that time. So like our Cloudflare contract, which is like enormous, <laughs> certain other ones. I fought for the best, genuinely fought for like the best thing we could get in a lot of these occasions. And that's the thing though. is if, Which I think is why I didn't get in trouble. <laughs> in, in good faith, if you are doing the best thing for the company and you can defend it. Like that's that's honestly the the guiding star that I lived by was could I argue this and win? Yeah. And if I can argue it and win, then the conversation's over. And this is not advice. <laughs> and realistically, the trust level goes up. It can. However, if you if you just do what you think is right, and it turns out that either you weren't right or your boss is an idiot and doesn't understand you were right, it could be very harmful it to your career really prospects. Bad. It could even get you fired, depending yeah. on what's going on. So, like, it's, it's genuinely not advice. But. Yeah, and that end, uh, my, my mom loves to, loves to phrase things this way, especially around, like, traffic lessons for the kids. Uh, she goes, it doesn't matter if you're in a crosswalk. It doesn't matter if the light is red. It doesn't matter if you see the little walkie man. You check you make sure they are actually breaking because sure you can you, you can be right and dead. but you'll be dead right yeah yeah um and and i think it's it, those are those are words to live by in everything you know walking across the street uh career relationship it doesn't matter if you're right if you get killed in the process yeah <laughs> xg ford says boss is idiot is the issue that's fair enough uh, data frickin says got hit in a crosswalk yeah 100 percent. yep yep arbiter k says i was hit by a car when i was in a crosswalk had the right of way 100 percent, man i uh i i didn't take a course until i learned to ride a motorcycle and what i found out was i just kind of naturally do a lot of defensive driving things but one of them is that i do not start moving when a light turns green no way scan i am making sure I am making damn good and sure that the cars on both sides are decelerating with enough space to not enter the intersection every single time. I've right. been honked at because I've been like, I have not determined that it is safe to proceed yet. And I'm just sitting there. Um, I had a, I, I've a very clean driving record. I've never hit anything. I've never been hit. I've, everything's nice. I had a scare the other day. It was raining really, really hard. Yeah. Visibility was not very good. I'm turning in a 
uh, it's like off a seldom used street into a parking lot. There's someone that comes out from behind my pillar. Like I couldn't see them and they're wearing all black. Visibility is terrible. It's raining. And I see them come to a stop and I slam the car into a stop at the same time. And it's like possible that that could have been bad. And I was just like, um, and like, cause like, it doesn't matter. They're wearing all black. It doesn't matter that it's raining. It's oh my yeah, fault. It's still your fault. Yeah. Uh, CEO Taryn, CEO Taryn has, uh, had a really good, uh, trick that, uh, I've used since I saw him do it. Uh, whenever he goes around a blind corner, um, he'll flash his beams or honk. Like if it's a bad blind corner and I saw him do this in a parkade was where, where it like was where it fir first came up to give you some idea, like how blind this corner needs to be. Don't, don't honk your horn every time you turn your car, obviously. Uh, but like, um, that's a good one. Yeah. In, uh, there's a, there's a par there's a parking lot that I often pull into that has an uncontrolled T intersection where there is not a lot of traffic. And you may have even seen me do this, but if it's nighttime, I flash my beams as I'm going toward that intersection to make sure that it's obvious someone is coming. You never, you never know. Like people, people get hit by trains and that's not because they're dumb. It's, well, sometimes it is, but it's often not because they're dumb. It's because it's not always obvious unless there is like motion there so there has to be something to break us out of our uh, out you of our be zone super zoned out yeah. sometimes yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah i i have caught myself being really aggressive about like physically moving myself so that i can check behind pillars whenever i'm going around corners i've always been really good about checking for bikes all that other time type of stuff but i i realized in that moment that i don't think i've been super good about making sure there isn't a thin pedestrian behind the pillar <laughs> You know, it's something I've noticed too. As I'm getting older, shoulder checking is more work. <laughs> it's like actually harder now. That's interesting. Like I don't I think used, I've really thought about that. But I yeah. used to be, I used to be like skinnier and just, you know, just generally wirier. Like I didn't take up as much space. Uh, like I've probably, since I, since I worked at NCIX, I've probably put on about 25 pounds, which uh, at, for five, six is like a fair bit. I'm just like generally stiffer. Like I'm just always like sore from working out. In, or your, in your defense, I think a lot of it's been m muscle. Yeah, but I just mean like, like I was just like, you know, just like moving around in a seat. Yeah. It was easier. It does get harder. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like, you know, you know, my neck's stiffer than it used to be and stuff. So, so it's, it's something that I, I realized a little while ago and I was like, okay, I need to make a very conscious effort. Cause I, I was the kind of person who would like make sure I've got nothing in front of me and like, look behind me like not a peripheral vision shoulder checker i was like anything back there let's go yeah um but yeah just i just my my cheapness older. doesn't want my insurance rate to go up <laughs> so i don't want to hit anything that is not the reason <laughs> and i care about everyone being perfectly safe all the time <sighs> can you at least try to convince me <laughs> hey man they both count what a dick. <laughs> At least your car is already red. All right, Dan, what are we supposed to be doing? <laughs> That's a good point. My, my, my leather is white. Do you, know how, do you know what a bad decision that was? <laughs> yeah, as, you, you can keep doing topics if you want. As age even further and the incontinence sets in. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's that too. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Chipotle. I mean, we saw Dan leaking in the uh, Badminton Center tour. <laughs> oh yeah, that's bad. What? There was like a puddle on the floor, and I made an offhand joke about Dan mm. peeing himself or something, yeah. or like I was just getting over food poisoning, something. And he goes and like, what did you do? You like crouched over it or something? I don't remember. I actually <laughs> can't remember. Yeah, he did something. Everything here like is just a, a fever a dream. It's just like Dan, the joke you've taken the <laughs> you've taken the joke was awful it's for and the uncomfortable. Editors and have... to to cut back. <laughs> yeah, the editors can find the line. <laughs> Yeah, who has more power in this company than the editors? For real, though. Oh, they can make or break you. Yeah. It, it, they are the most important oh, thing. They absolutely can. That's, yeah, that's something Ed taught me early on. Not not in, like, by doing it, by making me look terrible. Yeah, because you were all like, 
never piss off your IT admin. And he was like, never piss off your editor. Because <laughs> he, he kept Excuse saying, me? <laughs> when, when he first joined, he kept saying, like, it's all in the edit, it's all in the edit. And I was like, ah, it's all in the edit. Way. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> We'd film something. I'd be like, this was trash. No one's ever going to want to watch this. And it comes out of the edit. I'm like, wow, it's pretty good. It's pretty watchable. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Like a couple frames can make you seem like a non-funny, like bumbling idiot. Yeah. Or sharp-witted and hilarious. Dude, even it's just, actually like frames. Even it's just nuts. adding, yeah, exactly, a little bit onto the end of every clip so you just seem like you're kind of... Nothing lands yeah. and there's like awkward pauses yeah, and then you turn like, back no. and oh. it's great. Or it's, the whole roast video that had no laughter no laugh in track. it. It's yeah. amazing. Brutal. Yeah. Uh, to be clear, it didn't need a laugh track. People were losing it. Um, but we didn't have the, we didn't have the audience mic'd. Yeah. Ironically, one of the first productions we ever did where we hired a professional AV company to come in and run the production for us. <laughs> I had, we had so many comments on that video. Yeah, these dummies never get it right. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, it wasn't even us. Oh, come on. I mean, we do make mistakes. Absolutely. But if I'm going to own mistakes, I'd like for them to at least be our mistakes. It's got 6 million views. Yeah, it did okay. Hmm. It's really funny. I've gone back and watched it a couple times I, i'm sure i've said this a bunch of times but i i i'm guessing on i on average i watch it like once a year yeah it's so funny i always forget at least a good chunk of it yeah dennis and yvonne are so good oh man yvonne <laughs> did not hold back <laughs> no <laughs> oh it was great anyways we doing topics? Topics, let's do it. We have a lot of topics today. You got about 40 minutes till after dark? Intel's Megafab, possibly haunted. Uh. Intel's planned German Megafab has run into a potential snag in that the currently empty field where it's supposed to be built is also the site of several Neolithic burial mounds estimated to be about 6,000 years old. <laughs> Archaeologists have been examining the area since last year and noticed that a small hill in the industrial park was actually an ancient grave complex. The site contains multiple graves, including a chariot burial where sacrificed cattle were buried alongside a human being in formation that was meant to imitate a driver and cart pulled by the animals. Archaeologists will be working to preserve the discovery, though Intel is still expected to begin construction on schedule. Can you imagine being that archaeologist? Like, usually I would imagine you're kind of working, you know, within budget at a pace that is reasonable and it's going to be like Pat Gelsinger you're breathing down your neck. Can we build yet? There Can are we build yet? Billions of dollars. Do you have any idea how much our stock just crashed based on how our fab business is looking right now? I have some investors to please. Can we build yet? It would be kind of sick if they did like a statue of the, the chariot setup. To be clear, be cool. to be clear, I still like Intel in the long term, but I made it very, very clear. Not investment advice. Never investment advice. Not investment advice. When I said that, that it was a long term play. Long term play. Like geopolitical, at some point something might happen to TSMC and Intel's fab business might do really good long term play. Okay. That's all. Uh, what else we got? Google deletes incognito data. Yeah. Google has agreed to delete all data collected while users were browsing in incognito mode in order to avoid a potential $5 billion fine for failing to adequately inform users that Google was still tracking them. Google initially argued that its incognito mode landing message that users' activity might still be visible to websites that they visit was, su was a sufficient warning, but gave up quickly after a judge decided that this language was obviously misleading. Meanwhile, Google is testing device-bound session credentials. Great. A way of cryptographically tying session credentials to a specific device in order to prevent bad actors from accessing sensitive accounts by stealing and cloning session credentials. Discussion question. Is this enough? What about all the money they made with this data while they had it? That's a good point. That is a good point. I have no idea. I think this should I'd, decrease their fine. I don't think it should eliminate the fine. Yeah. I, <laughs> like, they did the bad thing. It's not like you can be like, oh, yeah, I killed that guy, but, like, look, look how alive he is. Um, Hello, welcome yeah. to the WAN show. Yeah, exactly. You can, like, that's not how that works. You can't uncrime. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
for something like this, in my opinion, they should figure out how much they profited off of them, and that should be the fine if they stop doing Impossible, it now. Impossible, though. How could you possibly quantify yeah, that? I agree. I mean, but Google, that's how I would like it. To Google work. might have their own internal metrics for how much they think the data is worth, but you're basically then you're just trusting it. Google yeah. to tell it to tell you what it was worth. Yeah, there's we can take Google's. <laughs> they should absolutely. I can't take credit for that joke. That's uh, that's G Dub and Floatplane Chat. Heck yeah, it should. Um, there should absolutely still be a fine. This is this is getting off with nothing essentially. They did a crime until they got caught, and then didn't get in trouble for it. Yeah. It's like you've been robbing banks for a long time. Yeah, it's like you're Instead cheating on your spouse. You're cheating on your spouse for ten years, and she catches you, and you're like, "Okay, well, I will stop. I will not cheat anymore in this specific way." And then she's like, "Great, yeah, well, no harm, no foul." Then, like, what? That's not how this works. That's not how anything works. Apparently. Anyways, one that I want to talk about. Yeah, Discord wants you to make your friends watch ads. Nice. This week, Discord will be expanding its Quest program, which I didn't even know exists, which sends notifications to some users with an offer of in-game rewards if they play certain games and stream them to their friends. These streams will have ads that live in the bottom left uh, bottom left-hand corner, I guess, of the screen. These ads will be targeted based on information collected by Discord, though users can opt out both of this data collection and all notifications related to Quest. Hmm. I have been wondering this whole time how streaming on Discord makes any sense for Discord at all, and this really didn't help me understand. Do tell. Are there costs? Like, is it is it direct user to user somehow? Are they? I don't think so. So it's going through Discord. <coughs> I mean, so I guess all the bandwidth of streams is going through Discord. And they're going to offset it with this? I mean, this is better than nothing. But I just, I just... I mean, honestly, Luke, it must be, it must be going through their infra because otherwise, why would they limit right? the quality so hard? Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Like, it, it could be just, you know, to make you pay for Nitro. Or, like, you can make that argument. reasons because yeah. some people's computers won't be able to do it. But realistically, <laughs> I, I, I doubt it because when, when Discord was in, hey, we're just VC funded and don't need to make any money, let's go mode, they, they made everything as great as they possibly could. Like, I think, I, I, I actually, even from, a, even from a user safety standpoint, I kind of feel like they would have to have it go through their infra. Yeah, because there are public servers that people stream in for sure yeah yeah and so they, like and they could potentially what? be liable for what someone sent to someone else on the platform like they'd have to have some kind of record of that um apparently it is direct oh discord streams usually go through stun turn servers okay hold on hold on we're getting some no we're getting some uh conflicting information in the uh, float plane chat. So I'm not a hundred percent sure. Hold on. People are saying, yeah, Google did not commit a crime. Um, just, okay. Technically, probably not, but stealing, telling you, you're not telling someone you're not going to take their personal information and then taking it. Is that not a crime? It might not technically be a crime, but it's certainly not nice. And it should be. That's, that's where I'll, that's where I'll leave that. Sure. We are, if it isn't it should be none there. of this is legal advice yeah hey, that thing he said yeah if it's peer-to-peer -peer, i've never looked into this because like i don't care that much it just seems a little weird to me if it's peer-to-peer -peer, i totally get it sounds good um yeah routing it through their service yeah yeah whatever um but if it's peer-to-peer -peer, then sure okay they found a cool way to monetize it Whatever. You don't have to do the quests. You can opt out of the data collection stuff. Seems all fine to me. Um, how it all goes live. Yeah, I don't have time to read this right now. Uh, but if if they are doing like transcoding or anything for it, it makes no sense to me at all. If it's directly peer to peer, then sure. Okay, makes sense. Go live streams are transmitted to Discord's backend and then routed to viewers. This hides the IP addresses between users on the call and allows the service to control where the data is routed. For example, the service will only relay video to a participant on the call if they are watching it. 
the go live stream is constrained by how much data can go through the network. Because the stream needs to be watchable for every viewer, the streamer will not transmit more data than what the slowest connection can support. So that could be a major reason that they don't allow yeah, super high. Stuff. Yeah, in addition, a streamer will only transmit data if at least one viewer is watching. Estimating bandwidth is complicated. How we measure performance. So yeah, yeah, they're not transcoding. That helps a lot. No, yeah, the, no, the client transcodes. Yeah, yeah, doesn't solve everything. Okay, but do they still are they still absorbing the bandwidth cost? That's what I want to know. I'm not sure. Either way, Discord's model has always been kind of wild to me. You look, you look at how much Teams and Slack cost, and then you look at what Discord does, and in a huge amount of cases, far better than either of those platforms. And it's like, what? Maybe the real question should be, why does Teams cost that much? Well, and isn't Slack like... Uh, Did you see Teams as being decoupled from Office? Did we talk about that on Wencho already? We haven't talked about that on Wencho, but that is very interesting. Yeah, me. it's uh, interesting timing. Microsoft's yeah. clearly going, hmm, we push this really hard in a way that regulators are going to be probably super unimpressed by. Maybe if in good faith we decouple this now, they won't go back and look at it. Because <laughs> you know what? It's the only reason we use Teams <clears throat> was yeah. because we were effectively forced to buy it because we needed Office. I would have happily paid less and not bought teams. This is a really interesting thing because like the Taryn linked me that news article. See Linus, you can uncrime. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Yeah, I mean I guess if in good faith you stopped being unfaithful <laughs> before she found out, that might earn you some brownie points. Oh, man. I think with most people, not enough. I mean, it's it's some. If I did that, I am still dead. Oh, I, well, yeah. I, I won't be at work the next day. Dude. I won't be alive. I'd be alive. Yvonne's made it very clear what would happen to me. I'd be alive as long as I don't bleed out. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. And when that woman says something, you believe her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should be scary sometimes um what is it like okay yeah i thought i heard i can't find anything on this right now so i don't know if it's true but i thought slack was like somehow managing to be uh to be having financial issues but i'm, I'm not finding anything on that so i don't that that might have just been completely made up but anyways um it is something to now reconsider is the use of teams what AK Panda says, you cannot bleed out from such a small wound. <laughs> oh <my God>. <sighs> <sighs> Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh... I'm no Drake. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we, uh, do we keep using Teams? There's so many problems with it internally. I know. And if it's being decoupled anyways. I just hate the pain of switching. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of bad, though. It, I know. Yeah. It's kind of usable, though. One of the frustrating things yeah. is Slack also has a ton of problems. I've said it before. I'll say it again. If Discord had an enterprise mode, I'd just put us on Discord. 100%. I'd support that. But it, it, there's just a few things it doesn't quite... Ugh, it honestly really doesn't need much more, which is, again, so interesting to me. Like it's Kind of infuriating. Yeah. Like, I can understand the Discord branding just not really making sense for them for a corporate product. Yeah, but they could roll the just same clone thing, it. different logo, yeah. 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 Cord dis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Sid Rock. What's a Sid Rock chat? I, like I don't know. What's what's the? Uh, hmm, I don't think you want that. Hmm. I'm sure they could come up with some name. I use Discord for my company, head of IT here. That's cool. We used to use Discord for Floatplane as well. There's like some issues with it though. Yeah. Um. 
I don't know. It's not. I. I don't think it's. I'm. You could probably get it most of the way there for what we need if you had a. Probably an arrangement of like different bots and things to manage different stuff. Um, but there's like there's there's reasons you don't actually necessarily want the window that someone looks at. This is less from IT. This is more from like operations, I guess. But you don't necessarily want the window that someone needs to look at for work to also have all their personal stuff in it. And then, okay, so are you getting them to have a different work Discord account? You can't moderate what other things they're joining on the work Discord account. Um, like removing, adding and removing someone from the server is not as clean. It's pretty easy to get off task in Discord. I'll tell you that much. You can data retain in mm. Slack and in Teams. Which ha- has very important... Um, benefits for companies right like if you have former staff that's not with you anymore and you need to like really need to have access to those records uh you can really need them like it can be it's not the kind of thing that i would ever be comfortable snooping on for no reason yeah but if it was really needed it could be like oh this changes everything kind of thing in that defense if you did snoop on it for no reason I don't think there's really a way to do that without majorly alerting the user. So like, which that's cool actually. Um, But yeah, if you want to like data retain direct messages that someone has from their like work discord, like, yeah, good luck. Unless you are creating the discord accounts for every one of your users, which then becomes like an onboarding nightmare and you have to track all this stuff. And it's just like, ah, I don't know, man. I, I, I think it's cool that you use it. I actually liked it for a lot of when we used it for Flowplane. The reason why we st- <clears throat> the reason why we stopped was uh, max- maximum message length um, and code snippets and a few other things that were problematic back then. I've heard that those have gotten better and easier to deal with. I still don't think migrating back to it is fully an option because of some of the things that I just mentioned. But I honestly, I really wish that yeah, Discord would figure that out because the calls on Discord. The amount of times I've had issues with calls on Slack and Teams that I just know we wouldn't have had these issues on Discord is insane. Discord calls are solid. Yeah. I will have issues in Teams or Slack sometimes, and certain people that I know will be around on Discord. I'll jump off the Teams or Slack call and call that person on Discord just to be... Sometimes I've actually done it sometimes with just employees if I have their Discord. Um, But sometimes I'll do it to friends just to be like, hey, is my mic working and stuff? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, bye. Just hang up right away. Go back to the work call to be like, okay, now I confirmed it's not... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. 100%. Um, Their their video, their, their streaming, even just camera, great. Screen sharing, great. Never any problems there. Text chat flows really super well. Their bot support is fantastic. There's a lot of things that they have going for them that's really, really good. Google Podcasts. Speaking of companies that have things going for them that are good and then just, I don't know. Uh, Google Podcasts goes bye-bye. See, I actually don't care. I don't listen to podcasts, but so but you seem more passionate about this. So here, let me read the thing. Let me read the thing really quick. Google Podcasts has finally shut down in the United States. Is this gonna be your Google Play music? Because Google Play Music is like, I, I will die on that hill. That YouTube Music is a piece of garbage. And if they just brought Google Play Music back in exactly the form it was in like five years ago or whenever they discontinued it, it would be better than anything else on the market. Well, I, I agree because I used Google Play Music. Yeah, it was I, awesome. was a, I was a big Google Play Music person. Why are you using Spotify stuff like that? All right. So anyway, Google Podcasts has finally shut down in the United States and will soon phase out in the rest of the world as well. In their announcement last year, the company indicated that they would be focusing on YouTube Music's podcasting features instead. Oh, good. We've heard this before. A Apparently, around 23% of U.S. podcast listeners use YouTube as their primary podcast listening platform, and only 4% use Google Podcasts. <clears throat> Google's own podcast, made by Google, though, isn't available on the YouTube Music <laughs> app. Yeah, that's a fun one. So, um, why do you care? Why does this matter? Like, it's, it's audio, right? So, does it matter what you play it in? Just help me out here. Uh, my, the way that I had mine set up, I don't know if this is normal. I don't talk to anyone else that listens to podcasts about podcasts. Um, but it, it would, it would, I was like subscribed to a couple podcasts and it would download them for me. So like when I'm on Wi-Fi, it downloads it. Yeah. 
when I go out for a run or whatever else, it's downloaded. I don't have to, this helps you, not me, because you pay for my phone plan. But like, I, <laughs> I do run that feature because I actually don't want to just burn through mobile data for no reason. Um, I, I like that it's one specific subscription feed that doesn't have the rest of my YouTube junk in it. That's just for podcasts. So when I want podcasts, I go to just this thing. It shows me the podcasts that I'm subscribed to and only those. There, there's there's not a like, I don't, I don't remember because I mean the app's probably gone at this point, but I think there was, I'm fairly certain there was a menu that I went to that never had any recommendations or anything. It was just the things I was subscribed to. I could see all the most recent things there. Easy peasy, no problem. It worked flawlessly. I, I saw no reason to need any other thing for using podcasts. It was perfect. Just pulled up our podcast because I guess this is a podcast analytics and Google Podcast is the third highest at 8% of... Uh, yeah, there you go. So, like, cool, okay, a bunch of people watch Joe Rogan on YouTube. Did we really need to get rid of Google Podcast because of that? Like, I don't... Fun fact, you said the app is probably gone. Um, is it still here? It can be gone, but it can never be forgotten. I, I keep the Google Play Music app on my phone uh, just just to never forget. I had Where's, where's the focus? I had the Vessel app on my phone for years. Yeah. Um, I still have Vessel on here. I don't. I think I eventually deleted Vessel. I think I did too. Um, TUV. Yes, I deleted Vessel. I think I do have something that you haven't been able to get for years, though. That isn't Vessel. Let's see. Is it the PT demo? No. (laughs) (laughs) Haha, everybody's sad now. (laughs) Let's see. There should be other platforms that work like what you want, Luke. Oh, you still can get it. Okay, cool. All, all kind of podcasts work the same way. As it's I'm just sure, an RSS whatever, feed, but I right? have a Google phone and I had the Google app and it's fine. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't have to worry about it. There's, there was no like ads or anything. It was free, easy, simple. That's probably why they got rid of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not profitable enough. Got yeah, yeah, I don't know. It just, it just sucks. Like, in other good Google news, Google invents the super skip. Oh, Uh, The source here is Creator Insider. YouTube is experimenting with a potential new feature. He's feeling physical pain. This is great. (sighs) Potential new feature called Jump Ahead, which allows premium users to skip immediately to the best parts of the video they're watching. This will also be available to creators on their own videos, (laughs) even if they aren't a premium subscriber, I guess. So you can see... Why the heck this positive feedback loop exists where the most popular part of the video is now the only part anybody is watching and it becomes even more popular and then so basically shorts wasn't enough. They want to turn VODs into shorts. Brilliant. If a user has already double tapped to skip forward, they'll get a jump ahead button that takes them to a spot that YouTube's algorithm thinks they might be looking for based on their previous viewing behavior. Google, of course, used the term AI multiple times to describe this feature. Our discussion question is, could this be valuable if implemented properly, or is this just encouraging us to turn our brains to mush? Would you get Ed to script a thing that just constantly edits our videos and moves where the graphs are? (laughs) (laughs) No, because we've got our own that. The LTT Labs website. Hey, yeah. like we're 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 yeah. gonna we're gonna save you the trouble. If you don't like the videos, then we'll we'll have this sorted out for you in the in the near future. Okay. Yeah. Now, speaking of which, they've actually got another article up there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, of course, I did. Um, so it's another GPU, just because that's what we are most we're most set up for right now. But we're we're still optimizing a lot of things. We've made a lot of changes based on your feedback from last time. And a lot of those changes are already live. So all that's up here. All right. So you can you know, author and it you is can, more readable now. You can share it. Yeah, no, it looks man, it looks pro, dude. It looks pro. Links to where to buy, purchases may provide compensation. We had a lot of people sort of asking, are these affiliate links? Yes, yes, they're affiliate links. Oh yeah. Um expand you can learn about the hardware you can we've got some pictures we, we, we have got we've got work to do on our pictures we, we know that but i still really like the luma field scans i know they look so, so cool. sick so cool i would jump to these articles just to see that i think those are so cool yeah that thing as well we have a, a dedicated video coming on the luma field ct scanner man oh we scanned buzz lightyear <laughs> from the tech shop 
just we scanned all kinds of cool stuff for that. Yeah. It was Alex in charge of that video, so you know we scanned some memes. Um, and not going to lie, like, looking at the charts on here is is a great experience. Yep. There it is. You can... Uh, if you guys uh, didn't watch last time, then uh, here, I think it's up here. Yep, you can configure what colors you like for, for charts. If you are colorblind or have any other kind of impairment that makes it difficult, you can change the theme of the site, change between imperial and metric huh. units super cool i have feedback for my own site you can just you know see whatever charts it is you feel like looking at what what's the best card for 4k rocket league well basically anything okay uh uh uh, uh cyberpunk hey here we go Freaking awesome. Oh, wait, hold on a second. What if I want to know about ray tracing performance? I guess I could see that here. F123. Oh, we only do uh, 14 for it. That actually kind of makes sense. Uh, so there's our ray tracing performance. Okay, productivity. Oh, yeah. Send a bench GPU. Yeah, man. It's going to be great once we've got. Oh. Ooh. Can I add to the comparison bin? And add this to the comparison bin. Oh, there's a faster way to do this. Boop. Add to the comparison. Does the comparison bin work? No way. Okay. So I can see the highlights. I can see the tested settings. I can see their supported features. Ooh. Ooh. Da -da -da. OEM technologies. I can see what test bench they were tested on to make sure that they are comparable. Very cool. I can be linked to this product if it were to exist at some point. Uh, oh, that's just to buy it. Okay, well, uh, it'd be cool if that could go to the um, our product page for it eventually, eventually when we have it. Um, maybe I, I kind of like the affiliate link thing there. So maybe we could actually have things for both or something. Super cool. Got to make money somehow. You know, we just want to make things. We just want to make I'm cool things with both. easier. I'm cool with both. We can link to the review and the affiliate, but we just want to make things easier. Okay, and uh, it would be nice in the long term to standardize our testing to the point where uh, we can, with a high degree of confidence, show you both cards on the same graph. But as it is now. There's a lot of work to do before we can do that with confidence. It's a dangerous step. Yeah. It's a cool step. Yeah. It's a dangerous step. Because I think there's there's going to be a time in the future where people are going to want, and we are going to want to fulfill the need for this. Um, people are going to want to compare things that weren't tested apples to apples. So if we can figure out through similar work to what we did when we were testing our 7800 X3Ds to see which ones were close enough. If we can, if we can do the work to figure out what those error bars should look like, um, I, we would like to be able to present that data with asterisks, right? Because we, uh, we, we can't test every single GPU under every single circumstance. Um, so it's like, yeah, okay, these are both on the same graph, but note that this one is using a, a generation newer driver or even uh, faster RAM when we had upgraded our test platform or something like that. In time, in time. Sorry, I wanted to get that. Very exciting though, man. The team's worked so hard. All right, what else we got today? Oh, Truth Social. I can't believe we've never talked about Truth Social. Have we not? We've like mentioned it in passing. It's a big social media site. Is it? They went public. Oh. Yeah. Their valuation. Valuation. Uh, eight billion. Eight billion dollars. Yep. IPO a few weeks ago, March 26th under the ticker code DJT. It closed the day at almost eight billion dollars. The site has around five million active monthly users. And then seven days later... FEC filings showed that it had lost $58 million in 2023 and made $4.8 million in revenue. Isn't that better what, than what Twitter was doing? Uh, no. I thought Twitter was losing like a lot more than that. Right, but Twitter had revenue and like user growth. User growth. Mm. 
Yeah. So uh, users aren't growing. Got it. Yeah. Uh, following this revelation, the stock began to crater. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wait, yeah. What? The ticker code is DJT? Yeah. That took me a second to like... Someone in Floatplane chat questioned it. And I was like, hold on. There's been a bunch of behind the scenes shenanigans. Um, oh, come on. Former President Donald Trump uh, sued a couple of the uh, of his co-founders in an apparent attempt to consolidate shares in the company. Um, a pair of brothers who were early investors pled guilty to insider trading related to the merger <laughs> of Digital World Acquisition Tr Corp and Truth Social's parent company. Uh, so that was part of the SPAC deal that <laughs> took it public. Um, I don't know how much it's worth right now. Let's let's go have a look. Oh no, not Dow Jones Transportation. Um, that, that came up for me too. I mean, it's a more relevant uh, stock. Why? Why am I not just getting? Why am I not just getting a proper stupid thing here? Yeah, weird. Not digital world acquisition. Oh man, I just want. Oh well, okay. It's a trending. It's apparently a trending ticker. So here, hold on. I just all I have to do is <laughs> of click it. it is. <laughs> here we go. All right. So uh, how are we doing here? So at launch, is there even a month of history yet? No. Yeah. So at launch, it actually went up, which is uh, which is something. Um, and this then is I, honestly not as bad as I expected. Yeah, yeah. It's only down from a high of seventy five ish to uh 40 yeah. which if you put a lot of what if you put a meaningful amount of your money into it you'd probably be pretty disappointed oh, about but. absolutely but we've seen worse maybe i'm just desensitized from looking at coins <laughs> 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 i'm not sure <laughs> I don't know. anyway the only the only thing <laughs> the only really the only thing that we're really um the only reason we're really bringing this up is this is not financial advice but oh. do not with this stock <laughs> people smarter than you who have been playing the game longer than you are manipulating this both up and down you do not want to be caught holding the bag this is not a real social media platform there is no real business model watch out 4.8 million dollars in revenue truth social is a smaller less profitable company than Linus Media Group Incorporated. In fact, hold on. Time to raise that eight billion, dude. Hold on a second. Let's go. <laughs> hold on a second. And build a heck of a lab. In revenue. You gonna tell people revenue? In revenue, okay? It is no, 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 no. Just relax. Oh Can my people goodness. reverse engineer? Look at, look at his hands. He's like... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So in, in revenue, in revenue, it is not even triple the size of Floatplane Media Inc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never even did that. Okay. Oh. And I have intentionally fudged things a little. Hey, man, I'm down with less than a, th just a little <laughs> bit less than a third of $8 billion. Yeah. Let's do it. Just to give you guys some, co some much needed context. If <laughs> Truth Social is worth $8 billion, <laughs> Floatplane Media Inc. is at least... A two and a half billion dollar company. So we're we're going we're going out for stakes after this. Is what it's you're saying. N it's not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can get a higher approval limit now, Luke. Yeah! <laughs> we can get new pens. New pens. New pens would be awesome. The only pen on my desk is one someone gave to me. <laughs> Floatplane Media. Floatplane Media is also more profitable than Truth Social. That's yeah. I mean. <laughs> The, hey, the fundamentals. I, I would hope it would be. Do we? <laughs> wow, Luke, did the bare minimum. <laughs> you're, you're Look not, at you. You're not like, you know, <laughs> down 10x your revenue. Wow. Oh. So, watch out. <laughs> I mean, should we take float plane public? No. I could use a billion dollars. <laughs> I, I, you know, if we're going to raise, if we're going to raise a big B, I'm down with it. Yeah. Let's go. I mean, heck yeah. I mean... 
pajama pants for all. No pants at work. Let's just, I mean, <laughs> we've got a billion dollars in the bank. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. People are like, shut up and take my money. Do it, do it. Guys, guys. It, it, no, you shouldn't invest in float plane. No, that wasn't my point. If my you guys point, collectively have a billion dollars. Yeah, my point wasn't to invest in float plane. My point was, do not get mixed up in this truth social thing. Because whatever you bet, if you bet it's going up, it's going to go down. If you bet it's going down, it's going to go up. It is being manipulated on both sides. Be smart. Be smart. That's uh, that's all I really wanted to say. That Riley was super worried when I was like, "Yeah, we're going to talk about Truth Social on the show." He's like, <laughs> "Like, no, 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 no. We're just we we are just what we're really talking about is how Flowplane is worth a billion dollars. Yeah, this is not financial <laughs> advice." <laughs> I'll put all my Linus coin in float plane. Heck yeah. Hey. When's the ICO boys? <laughs> man, if we were willing to grift hard, man. Oh, we we could have made so much more money. Could have made so much more money. Yeah. Oh, sometimes I wish we were eviler. <laughs> There's been a few discussions where we're like, wow. We could really do this. Hey, the best Can you believe time how much money start. there is in promoting gambling? Oh, man. Oh, you could have probably over doubled the company revenue, and I'm not kidding. I know. Yeah. I know. Like, pe- people might think that you, heard, you heard the valuation that was, uh, or at least the proposed evaluation that, that happened a while ago. That would uh, just, it, you would completely blow it out of the water. It wouldn't I even know. be close. wouldn't even be sort of close. It might be significantly more than 2x, actually. Like, there is. Trust me, I've seen offers. A disgusting amount of money. Out. Offers come. It's not that we don't promote gambling because we never got contacted. Come on. Don't I, kid yourself. I know creators personally, because I don't think I've seen our offers actually, but I've seen offers f- to other creators. I know creators personally that have received offers for gambling sponsorships that are many times bigger than other unrelated to gambling offers that I've seen us receive and take because we thought they were good. This creator in particular, if I remember correctly, was significantly less than like a tenth of our size. It's just monster money crazy and you, you wonder like turns out stealing people people's in, money is good business yeah. yeah yeah i shouldn't say stealing you gave it to them sure yeah, but yeah. just taking people's money is good business so it's like planty time no no <laughs> so it's a lot less than 10 yeah that's uh <laughs> that's an inside reference <laughs> yeah um yeah but yeah it was, it was incredible amounts of money and you think too when it's like <clears throat> smaller creators i can it's see why they be, do it it's got to be hard it's life-changing it's if like you've got medical bills it's if make you're or supporting break. people yeah if if money's super tight and someone knocks on your door and is like hey this is a really important point because i have the luxury like i have to i have to step back and appreciate that i have the luxury to say no we can make it without it yep I, that was a big moment for me was when we reached the point where I could walk away from any deal yeah. and it from That's any company cool. and it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Cause we, we walked away from some deals early on, but it hurt, man. We've walked away from entire relationships and videos back though. You saw that sponsored video. Yeah. They're back yeah. upgrading our worst setup. Uh, Jessica making not her on screen debut because she's been on WAN show before and stuff like that. But this is the first time in a mainline LTT video. I thought she did a great job. Um, we really, really improved her setup. So if you haven't watched it yet, you're going to want to check it out. Her <laughs> podcasting setup was literally in a closet. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That- and it still is. But it's a better closet. Improved closet. New and improved. Closet two. Now with 30% more closet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you move a wall? Uh, someone in full plane chat, N Golden 2020, said nearly $200 million US dollars were bet in North Carolina's first week of legalized sports betting. Wow. How are there even $200 billion? Million. Oh, mil- oh, that makes way more sense. Yeah. Even so, I, I might have said billion. I meant million. That's Two, a fifth of a, that's a fifth of a B. Yeah, like that's a fifth of the valuation of flow plane. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I do. Sometimes I do wonder. Sometimes I do wonder having the community that we have. If we were just like, hey, 
realistically, we're pretty upfront with you guys anyway. So what? We just formalize this. We release quarterly earnings reports and blah, 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 blah. And if you want to give us your money, I just keep all the controlling shares, kind of like Zuck did. And like, sure, by all means. And then what, like, what, I just, maybe I just lack creativity, but I wouldn't know what to do with it. Like, let's say our valuation wasn't $8 billion. Let's say it was $8 million. Okay, more than that. Let's say it was $80 million. What would I even do? I have a, I don't know if this is a spicy take or not. I have a take on this. It feels like a spicy take. Okay, yeah, let's hear a spicy take. What, what, what would we I do? I think you need to not. Mm. I think you'd go insane. Mm. Not because there's so many things you could spend your money on, but because you'd need a new thing to chase. And you'd have so much money that it would be so hard. You'd have to like make a fab or something ridiculous. <laughs> like it, it would be, a, but like, think about it. Okay, not that. We couldn't afford that with $80 million. But no, but like, that's the point. Oh. Because <laughs> he does this. We'll like, we'll like be very successful and then he'll be like, okay. Now we're going to do this crazy thing, and I'm going to go super negative. <laughs> I'm going to risk it all. We're going to, I'm going to like leverage all the different things. I'm going to do all this other kind of stuff, and we're going to do this. It's going to be successful. So we're going to be fine. So this is why I don't promote gambling, <laughs> because I have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, usually the plan's really good, and it like, yeah, we it will actually be works. fine. It has worked, I Eventually. think, every time. It, well, but some, like, are, some are TBD, but yeah, I'm feeling good. Enough. I'm feeling good. But Lions will get too comfortable, and then he's like, "I need something. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta buy a building. Figure out something to put in it. <laughs> start a game publisher. You know, yeah, like, like stuff we've kicked, know. stuff we've kicked the tires on. Start a There's system so integrator. Many ideas. Man, when we did that video uh, upgrading my game gear and uh, David's Game Boy Advance, I was like, I had, we had you and I had a conversation. Yeah, about was, starting a company. I was like, man, <laughs> the problems in this space are that there's, it's it's like I can have a reliable source for the part, a good price, or fast pick, one to two. Yeah, right. Often one. Often one. And so I was like, man, if we could, we make like a like a retro console, you know, modding like one-stop shop where we we basically take on the inventory risk of, you know, ordering enough that these small manufacturers can afford to do a run of stupid Game Gear backlights or, or whatever it is. So, so we hold the inventory. Um, we use our brand. We use our trusted brand to um, give people confidence in, in the product. We, we stand behind the product with the Trust Me Bro guarantee. Uh, we, we continue to expand by taking our storeroom of parts and allowing people to ship in their consoles. So we hire technicians to perform upgrades for people and offer it as a service like there's a whole there's a whole roadmap here boys i i actually ran the numbers i think we could get it started for probably less than 150 grand like no oh no no oh no 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 i don't need another project part of his problem is that he surrounds himself with people like me <laughs> so i'm just gonna be like yeah cool let's do it it is cool it is a lot of the ideas are cool. It's a great idea. But this is the problem. If you just suddenly had $80 million. Oh, yeah. You're going to be like. We'd do 80 ideas. Uh, yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong. See, that's the thing. It's like I, a lot of people talk about that offer we got. Like like I have. Like I have. You like know, that's in the uh, bank. How many figures is that? I don't remember. Uh, nine. nine. Like I have nine figures in the bank. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. That's uh, that's theoretical. That's theoretical net worth. It's not. It's not real. And if I if I were to sell it today, it's probably not worth that much. That was based on the kind of exponential growth that we were experiencing at that time. We've gotten things are a little bit in more of a mature state right now, and um, we've Doing also well. got some big bets that are taking time to reach fruition. Um, but yeah, we don't we don't have that kind of actual like cash reserves just sitting around. It's not really how businesses work, and borrowing is uh, 
so expensive right now. To be clear, I'm not going to complain because a lot of people are worried about the borrowing that they're doing on their bloody homes and how to figure out how to pay their mortgage payments. But debts it's general. been challenging on the business side as well without just free money flowing the way that it did. Um, so yeah, we just, you know, we just got to pick our battles. But yeah. yeah, I think I think going public would be unnecessary. We've we've talked about it a lot internally, and I just don't. Uh, I think I mean realistically, I've told I've told Taryn, he's got the wheel. Like nothing's off the table. If he wants to, like if he thinks that's the the right path, then he's you know free to make a case and and try and do it and and make a go of it. But I I don't I don't, I don't think see you would want to anyways. I could see I I've kind of wondered before about like a part of the business a particular part for some reason like maybe maybe you actually wanted i don't know i don't know maybe for some reason not even necessarily to raise money let's say something wild like we started um remember that gaming hotel i stayed in like five years ago yeah so if we were to start like a gaming hotel business okay and it's a complete spinoff. It's got like LTT branding on it. It's like there's gaming systems in every room. Uh, but other than that, it has no financial tie to Linus Media Group or Floatplane or the, the labs rooms Creator you Warehouse. could do would be wild. Oh, it'd be so cool with gaming IPs. Well, I or mean, or even like hardware IPs. I don't know how I don't know how gaming IPs would work if everything you buy is licensed. Does anything restrict you from putting it in a commercial space? Oh, I was even thinking getting them to like pay you to do it. Potentially some. I mean, there's certainly companies that would not give us the time of day, but but if not, yeah. What what are they what are they going to do? Like, if you have a, a a figure of a plumber who goes into pipes sometimes, I mean, the company you you're talking about, bought the figure. I'm maybe sure they'd find maybe a way. They'll do it. Is yeah. there is there a terms is terms of service of buying a figurine? I mean, if it's an amiibo, I bet there is. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i wonder about that that's something you'd have to ask but you'd have to ask the lawyers but if you created it yourself like if you drew it i think you'd be in trouble interesting nobody goes after like you know the the local tim hortons that you know draws a christmas scene on their thing and then wipes it in january or whatever uh but in terms of like if you are offering uh, 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 a plumber room at your gaming hotel and you've like custom created Mario alike assets. I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, they might, Cause that's, that's a commercial endeavor. You are effectively it. selling <clears throat> access to Mario's likeness. Like yes. there's no way. Yeah. Um, Tim SP asks, are you going to talk about all the geek squad layoffs that came out in the past couple of days? Does it change how you look back at your experience, having them try to fix a machine for you? I mean, my experience was my experience. I, um, I take back nothing of what we said. Uh, I think I think Best Buy owes me a refund. Um, they did not fix my problem. They charged me 200 Canadian rubles. I haven't watched it yet, but as an ex-member of Geek Squad, it just makes me sad. Um, as, for, as for the layoffs, that's extremely sad because like so many corporate layoffs, this feels like one where... It comes down to mismanagement, right? Like whether you yeah. overhired or whether you're not bringing in business well enough, it's not the fault of those frontline agents, right? That that customers aren't coming in. It's part of it, honestly. Computers just don't have as many problems these days. I mean, that's 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 fair, but also, oh man, that's a tough one because it's not like it's not like Geek Squad is something that. Um, it's not like they haven't had plenty of opportunities to observe a slow decline in unreliability totally. and, and adjust their staffing levels accordingly. I just, I, I don't know if I buy that as an excuse. Yeah, that's fair. I just yeah. scrolled down to where people are talking about um, just like Nintendo and Amiibos. You don't own the Amiibo. You bought a license to look at it at Nintendo's <laughs> convenience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Love it. All right. In other news, the indie game Gold Rush seems to be over. Red Hook and Metacrit, the developers for Darkest Dungeon and Slay the Spire, respectively, say that funding has dried up for indie games. I think it's Megacrit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that makes way more sense. Uh, notably, sources yeah. like exclusive deals for the Epic Game Store and Xbox Game Pass, which have both slowed significantly. 
They say that most other devs they've talked to have reported a similar experience of finding typical funding streams significantly cut back or canceled. Both studios say they're lucky to be in the position to self-fund, but they'll be putting on a triple I showcase of upcoming indie titles on April 10th to give other indie developers more visibility. That's a really cool thing that to do. very cool. And uh, we'd love to see what comes out of that. That's, uh, that's five days from now. Our discussion question is, is this the end of the indie boom or just a gully? And I, I don't think anything's going to stop the indie boom. If anything, I think we're going to see another boom from all the talented people that are getting let go from the major development houses right now. Yeah. Um, they're going to need to do something and their experience is game development. So you put two and two together. And I talk about that in the flow plane exclusive where I said I was going to talk about Starfield and ended up talking about the game industry. I talk about that exact same thing. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, Mega Crit, they, they make Slay the Spire. I'm a massive, ridiculous Slay the Spire nerd. Um, you know when the, the whole Unity thing went down? Where yeah. Unity got weird with their licensing? Yeah, which one? <laughs> yeah. I think, it was, I think it was one of the more recent ones, but yep. that, that is kind of funny. Um, Mega Crit responded by looking into Godot essentially and they made a free game called dancing duelists and it's actually like amazing new game from mega crit this was about six months ago which lines up pretty well i think with the last time yep. that unity went a little crazy um it's a it's a deck building game similar to how say so the spire is a deck building game but it plays completely differently and it's very fun free little game you can like essentially fully beat it um in like probably i don't know a day or two or something but i i would check it out mega crit super cool yeah uh what else do we have for topics today outlook's been doing some sketchy stuff uh email service proton is accusing microsoft's new outlook app of being a massive net for user data collection Oh. According to users in Europe who downloaded the app, a pop-up user agreement discloses that Microsoft shares users' information with 801 third-party partners. <laughs> the app also prompts <laughs> users to pick their own ads layout for where advertisements will appear in the app. Mac users will have some ads that appear as inbox messages, both from Microsoft and from other parties. UK users can access a list of advertising partners in the Outlook settings menu, which shows a large number of ad companies. These settings are unavailable in the U.S. and Switzerland, where Proton is based. While U.K. users have some ability to refuse to share with certain advertisers, this appears to be purposefully confusing, with some advertisers requiring affirmative consent, while others require an opt-out. Oh. According to German IT experts at Heiss Online, this new outlook also takes IMAP and SMTP credentials, your username and password, from other accounts synced with the Outlook app, which would also give the company access to emails from those other accounts, even if you cancel, because they've already stored that information. Germany's Federal Commissioner for Data Protection and Freedom of Information, Ulrich Kelber, has expressed concern about the app's data farming capabilities and announced that he intends to discuss the issue with relevant regulators in the coming week. Common EU win. I suspect the same stuff is not happening to Enterprise Outlook accounts. I mean, who knows? But you know what is happening? Somebody tried to corrupt Linux from the inside. Yeah, there's been some unfortunate things going on. A single off-hours Microsoft engineer has apparently foiled a long con attempt to embed a serious security backdoor into a widely distributed Linux utility. Developer Andres Frund was spending his long weekend... Frund? doing some micro benchmarking when he noticed that encrypted logins to excuse me um okay lib lzma sorry not sure how to pronounce that um we're using a surprising amount of cpu he tracked the issue to a back door in the upstream xzutils repository, which appears to inject malicious code during SSH authorization in order to enable unauthorized remote access. The back door appears to have been added in February and never managed to make its way into the production release of a major distro. It was uncovered in beta versions of Fedora Rawhide and Debian, which have been rolled back accordingly. Friund tracked the changes to a user who goes by Giatan or GiaT75, who has been a regular contributor since October of 2021. 
However, there is no evidence that this person even exists outside of their presence as a Project XZ contributor, leading some security researchers to speculate that they might be sing a single-purpose identity created by a state-sponsored attacker. Gia T75 is believed to have gradually amassed increasingly invasive permissions, in part by making genuine code contributions, but also possibly through a sock puppet campaign to pressure the original dev to speed up development by opening those permissions to others. Absolutely insidious. Um, which makes you wonder how much of this did make it through at some point. Yeah, I mean, this type of stuff has happened before. Um, like the login credentials for contributors to open source projects that are widely used are like very valuable um, to like maintainer accounts and whatnot. It doesn't happen very often, I think. I just said it's happened before, but I didn't say it, said it happened often. Um, because I think that community is like pretty on the nose about this type of stuff. Um, there's, there's, it's, it's relatively commonly said that like uh, open source stuff is generally more secure because more people are looking at it. It doesn't mean it's immune to security problems. It just means it can potentially be more secure. Um, it does, it definitely doesn't mean it is more secure. You can have projects that are abandoned. You can have not eyeballs on it. It doesn't automatically mean a lot of people are looking at it and assessing it. Um, but yeah, it sucks. It just another reminder that absolutely nothing is fully secure at any point in time. And that's it. Yeah, it's frustrating to see this kind of thing degrade trust in open source overall. I um, I would say <laughs> overall, you're probably still better off there. Yeah, it's but like I just said, everything has problems. Everything has problems. You shouldn't have been blindly trusting open source. Um, yeah. You also shouldn't blindly trust some closed source application from somebody else. Nope. Um, so it is what it is. You also shouldn't blindly trust Twitter. It turns out there's still a bunch of hypocrites when it comes to what? privacy. I know, no right? No way. The Intercept has acquired emails between the Secret Service and surveillance firm Data Miner that show that Elon Musk's ex has continued secretly selling massive amounts of user data for the explicit purpose of government surveillance. This goes against X Twitter's own use policy, which forbids conducting or providing surveillance or gathering intelligence. So it's only okay when we do it for money. While Twitter is not directly selling this information to the government, it is knowingly leasing the information to an intermediary broker, which is immediately turning it over to the government for law enforcement and surveillance, purpose, surveillance purposes. For the last decade, Twitter has also been pursuing a lawsuit demanding that they be allowed to publicly disclose more information about national security letters that the government uses to compel social media companies to turn over user data. Musk continued the suit after taking over the site and called the Supreme Court's January decision to strike the case down disappointing. Uh, discussion question here is, Twitter's hypocrisy obviously predates Musk's tenure, but how has an overt free speech advocate managed to wind up with such a similar stance on cooperating with government surveillance as the people he sought to usurp? I actually have a feeling that it has less to do with financial incentives and more has to do with, like, you must do this. Uh, I mean, you don't have to take money for it. I have a feeling there isn't really another option. It's like, here, take mm. the money or we'll just destroy you anyways. Um, I don't know. Not sure. I mean, I would be interested to see if there's a similar How arrangement with Meta. I'd be sim I'd be curious to see if there's a similar arrangement with, you know, a Discord. I mean, we know this just happened with YouTube. Mm, yeah, but that's not really the same arrangement. Yeah, uh, yeah. They enough. weren't selling to data yeah, brokers yeah. Yeah, 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 for it to be used for government surveillance. I, I really don't think that's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. All I'm really trying to say is if, right now at least, if the government wants your stuff, for the most part, they're going to get it. This is why companies that like really, really, really talk about privacy yep. don't have anything. They don't have any of the information so that when the yep. government comes knocking, they literally can't give it to them. It's yep. not a function. Which, to be clear, is not something that you can necessarily trust either. No. I mean, a lot Absolutely of VPN not. providers say, oh yeah, no logs. No logs. No no but 
you are just, it's full trust me, bro. You can't prove they don't have anything unless it's actually been tested in court before. And even then, even then. just because it's been tested once doesn't Oof. mean that something didn't change. Something can change on also a whim. It doesn't mean that there isn't like a malicious actor in there somehow. Who is logging logs. personally. Yep. Yeah. Like it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's a thing. I think the main thing that I'm trying to say is that I don't trust that it would completely stop even if there wasn't financial incentive. I don't trust that it would completely stop, but... Um, it my, might be different. It might be smaller in scope. It's not in the dock, but apparently like, it's, it's, it's basically like an all-you-can-eat API access. <laughs> Is is my understanding of it? It's like it, no, it's it's like it's bad. It's Sick. yeah, it's you no, know, it's it's really bad. I had never heard of this. I don't know the scope of it or how much money is being used. Yeah, I mean, it's one like of those that. things where if the hypocrisy wasn't already obvious when <laughs> um, uh, when he sued that uh, that watchdog group, that like anti hate speech watchdog group for saying stuff he didn't like. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's like free speech is not just speech you agree with it's free oh wait speech. was this the anti-defamation league stuff uh Something no like i that? don't think it was them i think okay. it was someone else i don't know basically i, I like actually try not to follow it because it just yeah there's a not-for-profit that uh reported on an increase in hate speech and that that may be true that may be not true sure uh, he might agree he might not agree but what it what 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 they said was was free speech it, it was free speech and so you can't just be like no i don't like that free speech and try to sue them to not say it i will <laughs> say not, I, it's not what the you can't be a free speech absolutist if you are gonna selectively yeah it's yeah. not how it works yeah i um yeah i always hated twitter i will absolutely admit it is more useless now than like ever I use it, it less is than still before. up a ton of people were saying it was going to go down, and I was like, I don't think so, and I got a lot of yep. hate for that, and it's still up. So It is still up. Screw you guys. Yep. But um, it is definitely more useless. It, the, the amount of, like, I, I think there's more spam now. I have no scientific reason oh, to think this, there is but it sure as heck feels like it. So much spam. Oh, my goodness. I can't even. It's, like, overran. Man, when I, when I click a trending topic, it's hard for me to even find out why it's trending sometimes. Okay. I felt that before the buyout. I never had that problem. Interesting. Usually the first 20 or so were relevant enough and had enough likes that I could, I could tell, you know, is it, are they dead? Is it pedophilia? You know, like, like, what is it? Why, yeah. why are they trending? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Now I will click on something and I'm actually not sure for, and sometimes I will even go as far as just giving up and googling name controversy to find out what the heck is going on it's it's pretty i i definitely use it less than i ever have yeah yeah and i and i and i don't that's true for me as well and i don't even really think i'm using it less because like musk bought it i'm just using it less because like meh. Well, you made your really position very clear yeah, you've never always it. considered it a dumpster fire i still need to use it for dms yeah. So I'm still on it a little bit, but I think my, I think my app limit right now is like three minutes or five minutes or something. Like it's really short. But realistically, you're objectively wrong because even a trash tier, crappier clone of it is worth $8 billion. <laughs> so you've clearly missed something here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's okay. The, per though. the purchase price for Twitter. That's all right. Was a bargain it's a based <laughs> on the value of Truth Social. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a really interesting take, actually. <laughs> what did he pay? Forty four million. It was it was forty something. He should write the art of the deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, incredible deal. Absolutely incredible deal. Yeah, the best deal. Um, <laughs> hey, a, a, a co-authored book. Between Musk and Trump on making deals. There's no way they'd be able to agree on whose name goes first on the cover. Please. Oh man. It's like it's like it's one of those reflective ones where you have to like look at it the right way to have the name show up, but then they find well, Who about, gets to be the one on the right? Yeah, it's a, yeah, he stole my joke. <laughs> and that's why my name would go first. Oh man. That was pretty funny. Oh, terrible. I, I, I love that joke. I don't know if it landed with the audience, but I thought it was hilarious. I think you did great. Thanks. It was pretty funny. Uh, we have a good pivot. I can't find the topic, though. The uh, Google SEO thing. Oh, wow. This is a huge topic. How did it take yeah, us this long to get it to it? House Fresh. By the way, 
I've cool never heard site. of this website before. Me neither. Potentially because Google's squashing it. This is a very well written article. Yeah, and this I, I no, I read some other stuff on the site. It seems great. Cool. I like actually like want to use this site now. Yep. So hopefully you guys find it interesting too. Yep. This write-up is fantastic. It's really long. We're not going to be able to cover it all. You should go to the website, housefresh.com. This particular one is... David versus Digital Goliaths. Yeah. Yep. Incredibly well written. But um, we'll give you the kind of the, the summary that is going to tell you enough to make you want to go read the article and find out how you are being misled. This is something that I have been aware of for a long yeah. time. It's something that I am aware is getting worse. It's was the major, major motivator that made me ultimately say, okay, we need to build a testing lab. Yeah. So clearly it's something that I believe in very strongly, but hearing someone else express it way better than I could. And dive really far into the deep. intricacies of like how and, and patterns and all this other type of stuff. How product testing is dying yeah. and why. Um, and like being stomped on its head while it's being buried at the same so time. So House Fresh. A product review site that focuses on air purifiers has published a, an incredible analysis on how a small set of large media publishers are gaming Google search by flooding the web with lazy listicles that recommend products that they have never even touched. It's, it's, uh, lazy listicles is fun alliteration. I would go as far as to say it's basically fraud. According to House Fresh, these articles are all extremely similar to one another, at least in part because they are all entirely based on Amazon listing information and marketing materials put out by the manufacturers. These articles are branded under well-known, seemingly reputable names like BuzzFeed, Forbes, Popular Science, and Rolling Stone, but they are sharply lower in quality and effort than most of their other articles. To the point where it can be kind of jarring, actually. And they, and they, they talk through how this happened with large... Um, Hold on a second. Yeah, with large media publishers acquiring the rights to these names and then leaving only skeleton crews in place to continue publishing a little bit of good stuff to keep the reputation going while just lazily dumping garbage affiliate revenue maximizing crap down people's throats. While Housefresh says that Google's product review updates generally improve the ranking of articles that actually provide independent information and thorough research, consumers looking to make an educated purchase are still having to wade through countless reviews from people who have never even seen the thing in person. And this is absolutely something that I've experienced, but something that I didn't dig deep enough to understand just how broken it is. Like there's this one air purifier that they kind of go into in the article because they tested it and it fundamentally doesn't work and is loud and is expensive. And they're just like, they're sitting there going, there is no way on this green earth that anybody who knows anything tested this and recommended it. And yet, it tops all of these recommendation lists and they basically dug into it and are like, oh, it's because it pays the most affiliate commission. And we've talked about this before. Um, remember, I figured out why $80,000 area rugs exist. And it turns out it's because interior designers get paid a percentage of the total bill. Well, the higher the price the better the listicle commission yeah. because it's percentage based. So you're basically being misled to buy a more expensive thing and it's disguised as editorial content. I mean, it's one thing if it is an ad and ads an ad, a properly disclosed ad, like when Miss Vicky's paid me to tell you about their zero trans fat, low and saturated fat, no preservatives, kettle chips. <laughs> Uh, that's what the style of chips is called, right? I don't know. It doesn't... Yeah, kettle cooked potato chip. Okay, they didn't sponsor us. But the point is, when something is clearly disclosed, it's an ad. It's clear that these talking points are coming from the manufacturer. But these listicles are not... They're not disclosed. It's not clear what the relationship is, and it seems like editorial content. And some of the people publishing these, if they're people at all, or writing these, rather, some of the people writing these, assuming they are people, are publishing so many of these that there is just, there is no feasible way that they have ever even laid hands on these products. And I've seen it before. I bought windshield wipers for my Taiken from one of these listicles that ended up not being compatible because they never actually tried it. Yeah. 
I made it compatible. <laughs> Dan's into it. Dan's very into that. So, so much go. respect. So let's go. Um, but they weren't. <laughs> but like, actually, though. Um. So yeah, you you need to go read it, Dan. Can we get this it's, linked in the description as well? This is sorry? really, really, really important. This is why we're building the lab. Because it is so hard to find good information anymore, and they lay out a really convincing and scary case for why it's going to get so much harder. I genuinely don't think there's been very many articles, maybe even single digit, that are like more beneficial to go read instead of just listen to what we've said. There is so much information in this. It's, it's actually dense. It's crazy. Dense with two S's. It's really long and it's very dense each individual paragraph is interesting like actually go read it yep and it actually really matters because you need to send this to anyone you know who shops online yeah basically or looks for basically any information because it shows you just how easily gamed the system is and house fresh doesn't even blame google outright for this yeah it's clear that this is a case where Google is in good faith trying to do the right thing and surface accurate information. They talk about that, which is interesting. But there's just... It's not working. The, the, the avalanche of bullshit is just... It's burying any nuggets of good information because... And we know this. We know this from building the lab. Testing products properly is really freaking hard. It's a ton of work. Um, I mean, oh man... Uh, we showed off the latest draft of power supply circuit internally. And even internally, there's a lot of commentary on, for example, the, uh, the AI voiceover that we're using and the kind of um, monotonous sort of scripted shots. And they're like, I don't understand the value of this. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is completely different from anything we've done in the past. Encyclopedia. The value is not in the entertainment for this at all it's just that we understand that consumers are going to look for information in video form even though this really would be better off as an article and an article will be available but we understand people are going to be looking for this information in video and if we look at what other similar power supply focused videos are doing in terms of viewership on youtube our production budget our total budget for each of these videos would be somewhere between two dollars and sixty dollars so we're between a rock and a hard place. Obviously, we would love to use humans to do all of the work. And humans are doing a lot of the work. Humans developed all these processes. Humans are testing the power supplies. That's, that's, that's the meat right there. That's being done by skilled humans, right? We would love to use humans for everything and have a human host and uh, have bespoke editing for every single episode. But if I were to tell you, okay, well, your production budget is $9 and I were to pay humans in such a way that we were able to survive on nine dollars of revenue Mechanical i'd be a monster Turk. i'd be a stop i'd be a monster and then if i say okay well this is net new work that nobody was doing before and actually creates additional jobs building these systems and doing all this testing um but this is the way to make it sustainable you tell me i'm a monster because we're using an ai voiceover and it's like okay well now hold on a second <laughs> this is in my opinion a best case scenario for machine learning. It just doesn't exist. We're and not going to do it without it. It can't exist. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. It's not that it doesn't. It's that it cannot. It's not economically viable for us to do this the traditional way that we've done things. And I think... Uh, there is a pretty good point brought up in full point. Yeah. You have an unlimited budget because it's a tax write-off. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um... There are legitimate concerns like that people have brought up. Okay, well, if we're doing it in Power Supply Circuit, then could that infect the other channels? Um, that is, I mean, that is the last thing I want. Yeah. I don't... I, I, it's not, like, good. You don't want to listen to that AI voice. No, not at all. I mean, if we can get to the point where Power Supply Circuit is averaging 100,000 views and we're taking on... That's we're taking on sponsors. And, hey, have faith. <laughs> Yeah, sure. And we're taking on sponsors. I'm here for it. And we're doing like huge affiliate revenue through it because people really value the independent testing. Then, yeah, let's let's, let's build a proper channel around it. 
but we have to start somewhere. And right now, the meat of it is the testing, and we just need a vehicle. Yeah. Uh, my only real notable take yeah. from it was that I don't think it should be you personally. Yeah, I, um, I've i seen people feel strongly about it both ways. It's about 50-50. Interesting. Interesting. The, the feedback that I have received directly, the like non-anonymous feedback that yeah. I have received, which I will now keep anonymous, um, but was all in alignment with that. But it's, I mean, it was a very small portion of the company as a whole, so it's not representative. It's both ways, uh, it, as yeah. it turns out. And That's I think that I can't tell because the feedback form itself was anonymous. Yeah. Um, so I can't tell which who is like was good who. and bad. You but can't continue the conversation. But. Seems like, based on the perspectives, <laughs> like I don't know which individuals responded, but it seems like, based on the perspectives, that the lines kind of fall between departments. Huh. Um, so some departments feel more strongly that like having it be Linus will make it feel less like someone whose juror got taken by AI and more like Linus didn't have time that day. Okay. And then on the other side, it's... Look, if we're going to be Uncanny Valley, can we at least just be Uncanny Valley with someone that is not a real person? And it seems like there's a clean line right down the middle. That's really interesting. Yeah, I know. Uh, Zenol says, I'm confused LTT isn't using real voices. So again, you know, our budget, our production budget for some of these videos, because we don't know what the budget is until we publish it and see how much money comes in, right? Our budget for these videos, based on what dedicated power supply videos are doing right now on YouTube, could be as low as 2 to $3. No. No. There's, there, it's not even, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. No, and we need, we need is, to get this, this data out there. This isn't even really, a, it's not a business move. It's like... Romultra says you could not do a video and promote heavily the written article. Yeah, that worked great for written media over the last 10 years. Also, some people just will not read it. Yeah. Even if we're, we're completely ignoring yeah. the business case, because these videos are going to make no money. But even if we completely ignore the business case, there are people that will not read an article, but they will watch a video. That is absolutely a thing. Yep. There's also people that are just never going to leave YouTube. There's been this consolidation issue. This The, the, the House Fresh article kind of talks about this. Yeah. Um, and there's been other people talking about this recently as well, where like the internet is turning into a very small, the whole surf the internet and check out all these different websites thing is like dead already. It's become yeah. a very, very small pool of websites that and have all of the And it's even traffic. smaller than you think. Yeah. Because a lot of the websites that you think are separate are actually owned by large publishing, by large publishers. Yeah. So like, uh, it's, it's, it can be very hard when that's what you've grown up in or that's the practice that you've gotten used to. Uh, it can be very hard to get people off of that small group of websites. Yeah. Um, so they're just going to want to stay on YouTube or whatever else. Uh, PFYCH, I don't know, Feitch on, on full plane chat said my, my younger siblings search for products slash restaurants on TikTok. So we've already, so coming back to the plan to, uh, to have these videos, AI voiceovered, AI edited because them on the shots are all standardized because a power supply, that's why we started with power supplies. Because they're all fundamentally the same size and shape yeah. with fundamentally the same physical features. Yeah. So all the shots are going to be along sort of pre-planned movements. And then it is basically cut together with a template and then validated by a human editor. Yeah. That's it. Um, and so we are already looking at, okay, can we do a shortened version of the script that, and then just dump it on TikTok? dump it on reels, dump it on Facebook. Um, Cause I mean, at the very least, we want to be able to get real valid information in front of people. And I and think that- Harder than ever. There's gonna be some compromises that we're gonna make along the way, but the mission is a good one. And you know what? We might find out that this just is completely ineffective and we've gotta take a different approach and we're gonna be open to that, but we have to start somewhere. In uh, again, the non-anonymous feedback that I received that I will yeah. now forward as anonymous feedback. Um, the people that I talked to would watch it actually. 
but they're they're not going to watch everything. I, I suspect oh, the view shouldn't. counts are going to be really low. Yeah, no, they shouldn't watch everything. That's the whole point of this. I saw I saw one internal comment. That yeah, was I'm not, like, sorry to be clear. I'm not saying this to you as if this is a revelation to you. No, I'm more talking publicly. I saw one internal comment that was like, "This feels like a content farm." Yes. Yeah. It's supposed to be every power supply ever. Yeah. And. I don't want humans working at the content farm. <laughs> yeah. I want humans doing the doing creative stuff, stuff, the cool stuff. But we need to have a result when someone searches for this power supply on TikTok. And that's a power supply that blows up or costs twice as much as one that's better. We, we have to address that. And on a 2 to $60 budget, we aren't going to be doing it with handcrafted human content. It's not going to happen right now. And it's not intended to be like a, like popcorn viewing. Yeah. It's not supposed to be entertaining. It's this is the objective. This is for the bottom of the funnel where you have you are aware of computers and you have uh, an intent to learn about computers and you've decided to buy one and you are choosing a particular component and you want to learn about it. Or it's been recommended to you. Like say you go to PC Part Picker and you pick one of the recommended builds, and you're like, ah, I've never heard of this power supply before. You look at one of the videos, you're like, oh, yeah, okay, it's cool. Now you have the confidence when buying yep. the thing. And That's kind, good. Kind of like what uh, I think it was uh, Casey Neistat said about the Vision Pro, that this is the worst Vision Pro. So the first video we upload will be the worst video, you know, in terms of the uncanny valley of the AI voiceover, yeah, yeah. in terms of the choreography of the shots. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take time. Yeah, it's going to take time. So Black Smoke Rises says, it sounds kind of lame, but I see the plan. Yes. It's not supposed to be super exciting content. It's not. It's supposed like by to... by design. It's supposed to be what we could make for under $60. <laughs> yeah. And remember, it's not even under $60. By the time Lucas tests a power supply, we are underwater. On a sixty dollar budget, yeah. very significantly. <laughs> so it is. Are you are you counting? effectively a negative budget? <laughs> don't don't even worry about the the human time. Are you counting the the like time on that machine? Oh no! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just do the time on the machine. I and forget it's how much that new. thing even costs. But yeah, and then power you have costs? to get you have to get updates to it. Oh no, I'm not factoring. <laughs> hey, don't forget about the square footage that that whole setup with the environmental chamber. Don't forget about the environmental chamber. Literally just the space. It doesn't just run off of the chroma. Heating no it, other cost cooling other it. Than space. Yeah, yeah, floor space. Oh yeah. my god! You're don't forget, already. we're gonna have to buy a lot of these power supplies. If you owned a parking lot, how much more profitable? <laughs> so much more. <laughs> like your one ROI. Parking stall. <laughs> An ROI on one parking stall. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty years. Like that's the thing, guys. You gotta. Try to try to look at what we're doing and see the bigger picture here. This like, is not isn't a business move. No, this is not a profit taking endeavor. Yeah. If we can turn it into something profitable, we will. If we can take this data and we can find nuggets that turn into LTT videos that we can get sponsors. Of, of course, we're going to do that. It's going to feed into the businesses that make money. That but, would happen if we made the videos or not. Guys, the intent here is we understand this is going to take time, but we are trying to build something. We're going to make some mistakes. It's going to take some time. We're going to have to learn some things, but that's, that's part of the journey, right? Like if we, I mean, I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> you got to dream big, you know, you got to dream big. I, I heard there was a, I, I tried to invite you to, I think you accepted it, whatever, it doesn't matter. But I, I went to invite you to a meeting next week to talk yeah. about like the launch of the labs website. Um, and I gen genuinely don't remember who, but someone told me that like, in, you had talked about it with them at some point in time and you were all excited about like what we can do next. And I was like, yeah. They were like, what do you mean? I was like, this is just, this is just how it works. <laughs> it's, it's, that's good, you know. But like I would be more stunned if you were like, this is the end. I have no more ideas. I'd be like, oh no. <laughs> oh yeah, no. What happened? Oh dude, my idea doc is... is uh extensive yeah girthy it's bulging 
All right. Uh, merch messages, next topic. Yeah. We oh, have a lot of wait. next topics. Do we have Super Chats after party today? I'm never going to get to go home, am I? Uh, we, can, we can set it up. That's, I mean, home's overrated. Uh, uh, if you want, we can, uh, we can get that going. Do you want uh, me to do that? I don't know. It's up to the float plane people. I'll tell you what. You can, uh, you can see if they care that much this week. I probably shouldn't do many. Oh, okay. Because okay. I have to shift relieve. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No, maybe maybe no no checks after I could party. do like maybe 3. Yeah, but that's that's a lot to like drag yeah, the whole thing exactly. up there. Yeah. No, no. No, sorry. Sorry. I sorry. apologize. I have sick birds at home. Yeah, Luke's got Luke's got bird babies to 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 take care of. Yeah. All right, Dan, hit us. Uh sure. Let's see. To be clear, you're still not off the hook on playing. Yeah, I just I had already planned to tell you like I gotta stop at three. Yeah, yeah. That's so fine. I don't know. If, yeah, probably shouldn't do the whole setup. It's all good. Yeah. Greetings, LDL. I have troubles for getting my point across whenever there's a collaborative discussion between me and ten other people in the group. Any advice for a timidly shy person like me? Um, this is a tough one. You're asking the wrong <laughs> two people. I don't know about Dan so much, but um, yeah, I'm, maybe, I'm actually pretty timid. <laughs> yeah, maybe Dan could make, uh, field this one. I was hoping that you guys could tell me. Uh, I don't know. You just yell over them. Uh, okay. No, I, guess I have an idea. <laughs> I've, I've you seen... turn them off. <laughs> you, yeah. just, you just turn off their camera and yeah, then they're they, gone. Yeah, exactly. They don't just, exist anymore. Just See, look, leave. He, yeah, just he does, leave. He doesn't exist. Uh, he's still talking somehow. How's this working? I don't get it. I turned him off. He's still. <laughs> There's a ghost in the machine. He's still talking. <laughs> Uh, I, something, something that I've seen people do that I think has actually worked pretty effectively and also helps if you have, you know, an issue with public speaking is to present your idea in some form that is like textual or through a photograph or a chart or whatever, and then paste it into the chat that everyone's using. Hopefully, yeah, I was going to say take notes. That. And if you need some time to process and collect your thoughts, you can always send it as a follow up. Hey, during the meeting, uh, these are some thoughts that I had. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, or these are some thoughts I had after the meeting. If it makes you uncomfortable to 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 talk about how you know you you need time to process, because not everyone wants to like just say that. Yeah, I kind of you know. I'm a thorough thinker, but I'm a bit of a slower thinker. You no one wants to say that out loud. So you just yeah you you can you can take some of um, some of that pressure off by not necessarily trying to address it right in the middle of the meeting. I understand that that's not always perfect because sometimes. Things will hit an inflection point. Decisions are made. And yeah. you can either, you know, steer it in the right direction or allow it to veer off course. And it can be tough. I, I find if you can get something that draws everyone's direct attention that they have to, like, you know, read or look at for a second to fully absorb, you can actually get everyone thinking about that thing for a second. And then hopefully you can talk through it or just by looking at whatever. Th thing you delivered, whether it's a chart or a graph or a thing of writing or whatever, hopefully they can get a point from it and then go from there. Um, it's not a perfect solution, but I've seen it used and I, I think it works pretty well. Hello guys, do you think the PS Portal was a success? I've been trying, sorry, I've been trying to get one, but they seem to be sold out everywhere. Live in a studio with one TV and wife can't sleep with light. I don't so, think it's a matter of whether we think the PS Portal was a success. The PS Portal was clearly a success. It just wasn't for you. If you're someone who doesn't understand why people want the PS Portal. Uh, and Tulio clearly is one of the people who does think the PS Portal is a good idea. And Tulio, the good news is there's lots of other options. Uh, with an app, you can pretty much replicate the experience of the PS Portal, uh, whether it's on a tablet or on a phone. But... You know, it won't have a DualSense style controller well, with smaller joysticks, mind you. Um, so, you know, that might work for you. That might not work for you. Uh, yeah, there's no there's no question. PS Portal, absolutely a success. Did you see that thing where it was, it had been, um, it had been hacked to run like emulated games and then uh, Sony got tipped off by, um, by someone and they were able to patch it? No. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Huh. Yeah, they disclosed to Sony how they had worked around and uh, and gotten it to do that. Luke, if you had to buy another car, what would it be? Also, thanks for... Uh, oh, no, just the first part. Okay. Uh, 
I have no idea. I think I would know what I would do if it was a new car, but I think the chance of me buying a new car is very low. Okay, uh, well, yeah, but tell us. I think a Prius Prime. They've been doing really good. Yeah, the new one makes I, a lot more sense than the old one. I really like the whole plug-in hybrid thing. Um, they actually like look pretty cool, which is weird for Priuses, but they do look pretty cool. Um, and they, they have good stats on them for the whole plug-in hybrid thing. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not super into the new car thing. So then I have no idea because I don't know what the used market looks like right now. People are upset because it's a Prius. Yeah, the new ones are pretty cool. Hey, I'm the guy who bought half a dozen of the old black hats and got a couple of the pro hats and recently uh, uh, got a couple of the pro hats recently and love the lack of button on top and clasp. What other small changes in products did we miss? Uh, so much. Uh, I, I wish we just filmed our product development meetings because there's so many good creative juices flowing in them and there's so many little details that even we forget by the time the long road is over and we actually release the product. We put up the product page and we're like, how the heck did we not mention this? Um, I don't know. Am I going to be able to, am I going to be able to come up with something? Uh, oh man, we obsessed over the location of the LTT branding on the cable management arches. It was actually, I think me who ultimately made the call after we saw the prototypes um, cause we, we did prototype it with an LTT logo here. Uh, and I think it was me who made the final call to say no, uh, no visible branding because the reason that this thing exists is for people to obsess over their cables. And as much as we'd love to have our brand all over your stuff, because you know, brands like that kind of thing, uh, it's not the right thing for this product. Uh, so actually, I, th I don't think on the product page you can actually see the LTT branding at all. Oh, you know, there it is. <laughs> so I don't know. That's not really a detail you wouldn't have noticed. I'm sure you noticed where the branding was on it, but that's the, that's the background for why that happened that you probably didn't realize, like how how long these conversations can be sometimes. Amazing. Uh, good day. Uh, actually, I wasn't sure if you guys talk, touched about this with the oh. AI thing. Sorry. Uh-oh. Ow. What? Oh. 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 Wow. Did someone point that out, or did you just think of it? Uh, someone in full plane chat. Oh, nice. Okay. Completely missed the transition. Ugh. All right. Wan show after dark. Let's go. There we go. That's better. Can't remember if we touched on this when you were talking about AI. With AI, how do you think about disclosure of use of AI in your content? Should there be a consistent policy? Should we even care as viewers? Oh, I think you should care, but you should care if it affects the quality, which it almost certainly will unless humans are hand curating it and hand reviewing it, in which case, is it really AI or is it more like disclosing that you used a word processor? Then no, you shouldn't care. Hmm. So yes, but also no, but yes, but maybe no. Uh, we, don't, weird, we don't have a policy right now. It's a really good point um, because I think everything that we've used it for that's public facing has been very clearly machine learning like the uh i, I showed you guys a preview of what power supply circuit's going to look like it's machine learning up the butt um definitely not attempting to hide it in any way yeah i mean oh i mean okay hold on no we uh we did we did um actually use an llm prompt <clears throat> to Get, get some starting points for the Smash Champs logo, I think. Or we, at some point, we, we got some, some drafts and then 
we did a prompt and then we got some ideas and we came to the final one so it was very human done idea but generation. ai was used as a to- as a tool i mean i've done ai idea generation stuff for tons of things like how would we even disclose that like we launched a new feature on floatplane it's like do we disclose that AI was used as a troubleshooting tool for some code snippet? Like, I mean, software developers have been all over this for, for years. Yeah, so I don't really know, uh, man. I, I use it for, sometimes I'll, I'll, not even, I wouldn't even necessarily say writer's block, but sometimes I find starting an email to take me too long, and it's like frustrating. And I'm like, oh, I have to respond to like 100 emails today. So mm-hmm. like, I just, I need something to get me going. Or like, this is a long message, I have a lot of information to convey. I need to get them to actually read the thing in the first bit. And I'll, I'll yeah, I'll use ChatGPT or whatever to help me start the writing. But I never really send actually ChatGPT written things. So what does that mean? I don't know. I, Dinus, Duke, Lan, and Lavid. How much of Dinus's little nice. ones remember the Langley house? I doubt they remember it at all. I would suspect, yeah, not at all. Sorry, i got to find another one of these. Sorry, go for it, look. I was going to say, didn't most of them not exist? I'm trying to think of the timeline. <laughs> I think only one of them didn't exist at all okay. during that time, yeah. yeah. Hi, LLD. Good morning from Taiwan. Compute tax is coming up. Any Taiwanese food or places you definitely going to have to go? Yeah, get me some soup dumplings. Yes. Oh, that sounds nice. So good. Do that get place. Get some Taiwanese style fried chicken. That place we were going to get soup last year was awesome. Went there like three different nights or something. Oh, yeah. I don't even remember. Damn. What was I'm that? sure we could find it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be in my Google uh, yeah. timeline. Yeah. I, I have like super creepy location tracking on. And the, the only real reason that I do is because I just like curiously going back and seeing where I've gone. Like my, uh, my Google maps location history is hilarious. Cause like there was a few years there where I was travel. Oh boy. Was I ever traveling a lot? Uh, check, check this out. Give it a sec. Uh, hold on hmm. uh, here. Hold on cities. Boop, 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 boop. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> it's like <laughs> red dots la- everywhere. Um, yeah, everywhere as long as it's in the northern hemisphere. I realized I have never been to the southern hemisphere. Yeah. 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 Typical northeast. They never think about the south. <laughs> Where did that accent come from? I don't know. <laughs> Nowhere in particular. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Luke, what's your... Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, oh, hold on, oh, no. Oh, God, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm almost ready. Uh, oh, crap. There's two places that I really want to go this year. Sun Moon Lake and another one that I'm struggling to remember the name of. Uh, Jiu Fen? I'm surprised you're not going to, like, the Eclipse or whatever. That seems, like, totally up your alley. I wanted to, actually. Yeah, I know. I couldn't go right now. All right. Yeah. Bummer. It's okay. I've gone to eclipses in the past. It is what it is. I, uh, there's a couple of people on the labs team going, I was like, take me nice pictures. And Dan Siegel, I have already seen very nice pictures taken by him, so I trust. All right. He'll get it done, I believe. Sorry, what were you saying? Hey, Luke, what's your rarest Pokemon Go finds in your connection? Uh, collection. Uh, I don't know. I assume it's Pokemon Go. Yeah, yeah, Pogo is Pokemon Go. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably shiny Pachirisu. But I don't really care. <laughs> Linus and Luke, if you were to wake up in a Freaky Friday situation, what would be your first actions as each other? Hmm. <laughs> 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 okay, moving on. Um. <laughs> It's not that after dark. <laughs> You'd have to check. <laughs> check to make sure that the birds are okay. Yeah. That's what he's talking yeah. about. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The birds are very important. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, Unplug all of the Unify cameras. I yeah. would I would jump off of something 
not not too high, but relatively high to get some gravity in me and see what the impact is like weighing that much. You mean that little? That little? Yeah, but it's going to be a way <laughs> bigger I've, fall. I've I've weighed twice as much as Linus for like. You know what? Not quite, but I'd go somewhere where there's lots of short people. <laughs> I was over in Japan, and like. I realized that that whole experience that people talk about where it's like just like being taller than everyone else. Well, I've never had that. You know what? I would have the being taller than everyone else experience. Okay. Yeah. That's what I would do. I mean, that would require some planning. Would that be the very first thing I would do? Probably not. I don't. I feel like a lot of what I would do wouldn't be that different. Yeah, no. Like, I don't really see how being Luke would actually change my lifestyle a ton. <laughs> we, we do a lot of, maybe not the same thing, but very related. Yeah. Linus well, says badminton, I work out. Yeah. Man, I would hate dragging your gigantic ass around on the court. This is why I was saying yeah. the first thing I would do is jump, basically. Yeah, that, that would suck. Because I would just be like, wow. <laughs> ba-doing, ba-doing. Yeah. yeah, you'd be older, though. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it's not that much older. Yep. Would your wife consider it We cheating? will not be discussing yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> would you sit on uh, opposite sides of the WAN table? Ooh. That would probably feel the most wrong. No. No. <laughs> yeah, not at all. <laughs> I don't even think I could do the show. Seeing colors differently and like yeah. tasting things differently and stuff would, would definitely be a lot more jarring. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I definitely do something really embarrassing as him because being a public figure, I kind of like, I have to be on my best behavior all the time. <laughs> And yeah, he's a public figure too, but I don't give a f because it's him. <laughs> so I'd do something like really weird, like streak in the park or something, you know? Nice. Yeah. Have we gone streaking? No. Nice. I I'm I'm far too conservative and shy. Mm. Yeah. I uh, actually, it's it's funny. Like, I play a very outgoing character on TV, but I am like not on TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I'm, I'm I'm actually pretty withdrawn when I'm not on TV. Yeah, um, like being being outgoing and uh, like doing an underwear shoot for me, very uncomfortable and challenging, especially the first time. Like I have to push myself for a lot of what I do here. Here's a question: If you had, if there was the option. Yeah. For like 24 hours, would you do it? Yes or no? I would immediately, no question. I feel like I would for like pretty much anyone though. Yeah. I just think it'd be such a, such an interesting experience. It'd even, be a freaky Friday. That's for sure. Yeah. Even, even, even just the like vision though. I mean. It'd be really interesting to yeah, see. Yeah. Your downgraded ass vision probably wouldn't oh, be. Oh yeah. You'd uh, get wrecked. Great for me. But, but even just like the color shift of it. I'm still over 2020, baby. I just got my eyes checked. Nice. Yeah. I'm um, definitely not. There's a matter. It's a matter of time for me, though. It's 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 not like as good as it was. I think that's pretty, yeah. pretty normal. Yeah. Um, Seeing things differently, hearing things differently, tasting things differently, experiencing things differently in general. I think just would be so interesting. You know, what's funny is we've talked about this before, but it's been in the context of substance use. And what i have said before because i've i've not with you at this particular from this particular perspective but i've had the argument made to me that it can be good for broadening your perspectives and uh and helping you experience things in a in a new way and, and sort of what i've what i've said is that i tend to be um quite controlling of my experiences and i tend to i tend to be um I tend to like to be in control of myself. Yeah. And this would be me literally not being in control of myself at all. Honestly, I have... It's a big ass. I have considered the <clears throat> ramifications of what the other person would do practically not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that might change my mind a little bit. I'm just uh, like, I'm thinking... Like to be clear, if it was... Just my own shift. If it was you, if it was, if it was you... 
and this was a consensual body switch that's with probably ground why rules, i wasn't really thinking about it it's because i'm not too worried about then that. that's one thing right but if you Don't were just like partners <laughs> right yeah yeah leave it alone yeah exactly but I, I i feel like most of the like ground rule thing like yes we should lay them out if but this that's were also to not really the point of freaky friday necessarily that's true. It, it's part of the point is you are... I think that's another reason why I'm okay with it, though, is because I don't think we would have to actually have to establish those. Yeah, like, I wouldn't be worried about getting my body back with diseases, you know? Like, it's yeah. not it's not like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I would literally not be in control of myself, which is something that I am deeply unsettled by. Mm -hmm. So it's not an obvious yes to me. It's something I'd have to, I'd have to fester on for a little bit. I wouldn't be too worried about it. You bruise me up a little bit. It's fine. Because there's, there's got to be, if, if it were to happen, the first few minutes have got to be just pure chaos. I would think so. You yeah, I wouldn't even properly. be able to walk. Yeah, like it's gonna I'd be, be like, what's so going weird. on? And when I and when I like accidentally hit something, it like damages it. <laughs> you know, feel like an ogre. No offense. I, I, you would probably though. <laughs> <laughs> you better <laughs> You'd be like, this sucks. Like looking up at people when they're talking to you. <laughs> I have noticed somewhat of a pattern is that I find smaller people are more clumsy. And my conclusion is that I think it's because it matters less. Yeah, the consequences are like eh. <laughs> Yeah. Like what, I fall over? I'm so close to the ground anyway. <laughs> like the the impact is pretty low, you yeah. know? Yeah. Anyways. Hi, big Luke. Have you tried? <laughs> Hold on. Willing Spy says, <laughs> Oh no. You'll have to go to the bathroom eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I yeah, always sit down anyway. I don't have to look. <laughs> you'd have to. You'd have to experience it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no, but like actually, mechanically. I, oh, my God. No, I don't. To go to the washroom. I, I, don't, I don't think I'd have to do that. <laughs> Anyways, have right. you tried a virtual challenge such as the conqueror on your fitness journey? My oh. girlfriend just started routinely exercising and virtual challenges have really kept her going. <sighs> I don't really want to say. No, I have not. And if it's working for them, that's absolutely fantastic. And they should keep doing it. And that's great. To me, I'm a big hater. Looks like a massive cash grab. Do all challenges. They have like themed ones, but they all they all cost money. Do they? Yeah. You oh. get this cool metal thing at the end. Okay. So, so like if, if your little goblin collector brain is motivated enough by that to go out and do stuff, great. Sure. Yeah, but like Poke go for it. Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go doesn't works even, for me. Doesn't even work for most people. Yeah, but neat, but what I'm saying concept. is like like I I don't I'm not into this. I it, it looks like a cash grab to me personally. Um, all that I type mean, of stuff. Look, but if it works Luke, for them, great. You saw what happened when we launched our series four pins, right? Yeah. So some the people bundle might, is sold out. Sir. Some people might be super motivated by this, and if yes. this motivates you to to get up and go out for runs and do stuff like that, that's awesome. It wouldn't yeah. really work for me. And it's an expense, so you might guess how I'm going to feel about it. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> but it like, costs more than zero dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I genuinely don't want to trash it because if it's working for you, then awesome. But yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. Question for Slick. I have recently transitioned from so, IC to EM for a newly minted team. Uh, individual contributor to engineering manager. Yeah, I, I googled them earlier, but I can't remember. Uh, and I'm experiencing some trepidation about the shift. Any advice or reference material you found helpful? Uh, reference material? Most of what I learned about it is from Wendell. <laughs> Uh, I don't think he talks about that stuff a ton on his channels. Um, the Mythical Man Month is a cool book. A bit of an outdated title, but it's a cool book. Um, other than that, there's tons of books. I read a bunch of books. I'm still reading books every now and then on the topic. Um, for the most part, honestly, though, you'll be fine. Just care about your team and you'll be fine. 
This is great. Trendy says sitting down to pee is a prison thing. And uh, Demi's got my back here. It's a tired in the middle of the night and not wanting to turn on lights or clean up a mess thing. Hundred <laughs> percent. I also uh, I also find that the other way is pretty unsanitary because even if you don't hit the seat, the splashback is very significant. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. Completely agree. Also, I often go in pairs to the bathroom, like number one and two. <laughs> <laughs> I often go in pairs. So, what? like, it's just inefficient. <laughs> yeah. Because yep. if I'm going to end up sitting down anyways, like, what was the point of that whole charade? <laughs> I don't know. It's also one of the few times that I can get uninterrupted time on my phone. Yeah. Like, so there's just a, there's take a lot a of break, factors. Dude. Yeah, there's a lot of factors. Relax. Yeah. I, I Stay a while. Yeah. To be clear, I was joking roll. that I always sit down, but I actually do quite often because it's just like yeah man i'm just like i'm i'm chilling in here and i don't need like pee all over the wall next to my toilet i just actually don't need that it's one of the reasons bathrooms smell so bad especially men's bathrooms even if the people who use it are accurate the splash the, the splash back it's, bad. it's real even and even okay even if it doesn't like come out of the bowl you're very likely splashing the inside of the... Yeah, it splashes the underside. So, and um, then it doesn't get washed away properly. I realized this. I realized how bad it was when I was giving my uh, one of my kids a hard time, and I bet you can imagine which one, <laughs> about like aiming badly and not cleaning up afterward and realized that actually it wasn't that. It was that it was all collecting yeah. under yeah. and like drying there, and then it dries on, and it's gross. Gross. And it just sucks. Gross not worth it. I sit down all the time. Ugh. Unless I'm... If you're at, like, a public thing... Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm, I'm a, like, foot with ki kicking up the seat, touch nothing guy in public washrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Me too. Totally. Like... But if I'm at home, like... A no, I'm just if it's a down. particularly gross one, I've even been known to make a little toilet paper seat for myself. Me too. I'm, I'm lazy about it. Have you done the just power squat? Don't touch? No. Yeah. No, I haven't done the power squat. I've done that before. That can be... Uh, <laughs> can we talk about something concerning. else now? <laughs> no! <laughs> ah, yeah, too bad. Can you relay to Luke that he has a very nice laugh and it is very contagious? Is this a question? No. Thank you, though. It's funny. I, I read oh the comments God, talk often. I am. I read the comments often, and it's so divisive. Oh, yeah. Some people hate it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's it. And it, like, no one really seems to be in the middle. People are like, like it a lot, or I ruin the entire show and their whole lives, and they hate me. Vegemite. Like, You're okay. basically Vegemite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey DLL, Luke, if you were the chief oh, no. vision, I don't know, chief vision officer at LMG, would you have started labs knowing the immediate return on investment and why? Yes, but not in the same way. Mm. And I think I've communicated this to Linus. I don't. I'm, I'm not exactly caged about my opinions on things. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't have gone as hard as fast. Um, if it was, which I, I'm not saying this is better to be clear, it is what I would have done. Um, but yeah, I would have That's started fair. with fewer verticals. I probably would have started with like just like GPU, CPU and potentially nothing else mm. or even just GPU. Keep it really narrow, figure out all the processes, figure out all the speed bumps that you're going to run into with just that vertical that apply to multiple other verticals and then start growing from there, but kind of like master one and then grow. That would have been a lot slower. That would have accomplished the main primary goal that Linus has a lot slower. Um, that wouldn't, that would have caused major delays in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, but that is probably maybe a little bit more expanded than that. Maybe like it depends kind of who applies and what special specialties they had. Maybe it would have been a couple more things. Maybe it would have been like GPU and keyboard. I don't know. Um, but it would have been fewer total things. Um, probably kept the original location. Oh, the little one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the smaller team would have actually been okay. There's no way that team would not work out of that office. You had to get something else. Oh yeah. But I would have kept scope, scope small and then tried to stay in there. That's fair. Um, 
I mean, the reason we didn't was because there was so much work that was going to have to be done regardless of how many verticals we <laughs> tackled. Like we would still need the website in basically it's exactly as it is form. Yeah, I'm not, I'm genuinely not saying my way is like for sure better. And I'm not saying my way is better either. Yeah. I'm just saying there were, there were pros and cons either way. Yeah. And uh, there's definitely been speed bumps that we've hit that we wouldn't have with that method. But we might have hit different speed bumps. If you put all your eggs in two baskets and one of them hits a showstopper, now you've got one basket. Good job. You're launching yeah. half as many things as you set out to launch. It's tough. And this is like the, the kind of like riskier way. But if you make it, the payoff is bigger and faster. So the Linus way that is <laughs> this is often how it will go. And you, uh, yeah, Ur urban fervor says you have to pick a direction eventually. Yeah. Yeah. That's you're never going to agree with every single thing that the company that you work for does. And that's actually okay. And if that's not okay, then you're going to have a lot of problems. Even I don't agree with everything the company does. Yeah. It's just, it's true. It's a thing. No exaggeration. Hi, DLL. Big fan of y'all. Luke, a few weeks ago, you mentioned Mattermost uh, having its own issues as a service. Could you elaborate? I work for a government organization that plans on using it for secure messaging. Oh, man, it's been a while. We tried out Mattermost quite a while ago. Um, it's been years since we tried it, so I'm not entirely certain. Yes. If I remember correctly, this is self-hosted. If it's been that long, it might be. I don't want to say too much about it. Challenging for us to say too much about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe maybe hit us up again once you guys have trialed it and let us know if our perception of it was outdated. I, I mean, would be interested in that take, especially because with teams decoupling, it might legitimately be time to reassess the chat solutions market. Papadaka says, uh, I use Mattermost with my college buddies and it works great. So yeah, but that's, totally... that's one endorsement and that's uh, all that's worth. But um, <laughs> yeah, let, let us know. We'd be, we'd be happy to, to learn more about it. The professional self-hosted plan is $10 per user per month billed annually right now. Wait, it's uh, self-hosted and you pay $10 a month? Well, there's a free and there's a self-hosted. Got it. Tier. Okay. Um, I believe the self-hosted tier, the main difference is things like SSO, um, LDAP user sync, advanced access controls, things like that, that you probably will want in an mm -hmm. enterprise environment. Right. Um, maybe not for your bros at university, but at an enterprise environment, probably. Okay. So you're likely going to be targeting $10 a month. There's also a enterprise option, which sounds like it's maybe them hosting it. Okay. Um, I don't know. Okay. I'm worth 40K and a bottle of beer. Nice. Hell yeah. LLND. How do you think or feel about the framework and the free courses? I hope everyone is okay, but I'm glad I got my oh. 16 this week. It was so cool. I can't believe how fast TSMC was back at work. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was it was like hours. Wild. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, having all of your manufacturing consolidated in one place is a big challenge, but I know Framework has had um, some feelings about having their devices manufactured in China, and they've opted to keep their manufacturing in Taiwan, at least for now. And um, it's risky, but hopefully uh, hopefully, nothing too disastrous, like the um, the Thailand floods that like almost trashed the hard drive industry for uh, for a number of months there. Um, hopefully nothing like that happens. And of course, uh, hopefully if something like that were to happen, uh, laptops and hard drives would be the least of our concerns and we would be uh, more worried about how to help the people. Yeah. I'm glad you're enjoying your framework seven, uh, framework 16 though. I'm obviously super, super proud of what the team is doing over there. Not proud because like I helped necessarily, but proud because, uh, they just seem like really cool people and I'm, I'm proud of their efforts. They're working hard and they're doing something they really believe in. And I think that's really important. And sorry, I was muted for that one. It was, uh, what do you think about the framework and the earthquake? Oh yeah. And they were enjoying their framework 16. That's right. That's right. <laughs>
Last of the curate I've got here. Howdy, DLO. I'm six feet six inches. Show off. 198 <clears throat> centimeters. And would love to get your shirts or flannels because my friends love them. So, is there an ETA, even an LTT ETA, on when your tall or big skews start? Please. Please. Um, this shirt doesn't cover my back. It's very comfortable, though. I think our next shirt order for the blank tees should have... Tall sizes. Can I can I get fifty? I will actually. I want to be a cartoon character and wear the same thing every day. Spending money if that happens because I will legitimately replace my wardrobe. I will also be doing the exact same. I will get rid of everything. And everything in my wardrobe is LTD stuff. They're good shirts. <laughs> so they're great shirts. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Do you have a favorite flower? No. Me neither. All right. Sorry, Brad F. <laughs> And I think that's it for the show. <laughs> Brad F. asked our favorite flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever was, gets my wife off my back. Bran. <laughs> Bran. Come on. I don't know. Whole dude. wheat? It sounds, oh, like, it sounds like a hassle. Like, I'm sorry, I have to put water in it? And for what? <laughs> like, I'm, so it dies <sighs> slight, slightly slower. Yeah. Cool. Like your relationship. All right. I think that's it for the show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Hey, Bye. Terry Fox Foundation. Yeah. Bye. Okay. I have this whole thing I need to go.